after the woman. Yeah, and didn't he um trying to declare nuclear war on the hurricanes and stuff? Ah, uh, yes, yes, he did. Yeah, and he wants to get rid of NOAA, which is our national uh, weather uh, warning system. He wants to get rid of that. He wants to get rid of our Supreme Court. And he oh, no, 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 he, he doesn't want to get rid of the Supreme Court. He wants to load it for people that's going to work for him. He wants to get rid of the Justice Department, is what he said. That was it. The, the important thing is, make sure he doesn't corrupt Hayes and Christensen, and you should still have a chance. Put the Ugh. vaccine skeptic in head of health. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, he's going to make our health minister uh, an absolute idiot. Uh, the guy... The, uh, it's embarrassing who this man is. Yeah, he has no... Whatsoever. It's, it's, it's not JFK, it's RFK or something like that, isn't it? RFK, yeah. yeah. Well, in case folks uh, who are just tuning in couldn't tell, <laughs> it's a very interesting day to be uh, uh, to be playing a Star Trek game because we have the very, very important election day going on currently yeah. in amongst our cousins across the pond, so uh, all the best to them. May they get the oh, result that they desire rather than what they deserve <laughs> i don't know that sounded harsh a bit passive aggressive coming from me there i don't know we'll see how the fates uh weave <clears throat> weave what happens next i suppose i was just going to say if you hear any explosions in the background it's actually coming from the british people yes <laughs> we're celebrating our um national uh, our national burner trade today yeah what we need one of those <laughs> well you know it may be a few hundred years after hours, but you know, you know never too late. Never to too late. Yeah, exactly, exactly. What? They definitely burned. I mean, you never know. They might canonize that guy. That you know what? I'm going to stop talking right now <laughs> before I start giving people ideas. <clears throat> before I enter these notions into the collective consciousness, and somebody goes, mm, "I've just had an idea." No. When? Anyway, we are here. We are, we're here for Star Trek tonight. We're here for Star Trek, and Star Trek is full of hope, hope for the future. So that's what we're going to be aiming for today. I hope. Okay. Star Trek. Indeed. Right. Okay. So I just want to confirm first of all that uh, everybody who wants to be is signed in. I think everyone is, except for. Mike, Mike, you haven't quite signed in to Foundry yet. Yeah. So, that's cool. Here we go. Nice. And those who want to uh, hear Sirenscape's uh, ambience and stuff uh, can hear it fine. Mm -hmm. Excelente. And so, I'm just going to throw us then into our intro video. And we will be right back with you, folks. So uh, stay tuned. As soon as I find it. Okay, here we go. See you in a bit. And welcome, welcome, folks, to the continuing adventures of the USS Navis. I am NJ, the GM, and I will be your games master for the next couple of hours. With me are most, but not all, of the Navis crew. We are, sadly, without our captain today. So the rest of the crew are, well, when the, when the captain's away, 
let's hope they don't destroy the world. I mean, we can't uh, help that. That's not the nice which world. To say I'm sitting in the chair. <laughs> 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 okay, dokey. All right then. So, uh, yes, welcome along. This is part three now of our ongoing episode, Unintended Consequences. This has seen the Battle of Sector 001, where the Navis was called along with uh, whoever else was in the vicinity and able to answer the call to stop the Borg from reaching Earth. And so the Navis crew were present during the uh, latter part of the Battle of Sector 001, and have indeed helped out immensely, helped uh, defeat the Borg, without suffering too much in the way of damage to their ship. There were a couple of occasions here and thereabouts that were close calls, a bit hairy, but otherwise, uh, tactically, strategically, the Anavis has come through quite nicely, and as such, we have strayed a little bit from the canon events. Mike, your mic is popping. Oh. Mm, I don't know what to do about that. Let's see. <clears throat> well, there we are. I will. It's better. Thank you. Anyways, um, we'll make the best of what we got. Uh, so yes, so yes, some parts of the established canon events have now deviated since uh, the Navis was able to actually save uh, one or two ships uh, that were going to be destroyed by the Borg at the battle, but uh, didn't get everybody, but did improve the situation overall. The Defiant would have been more badly damaged than it was as a result of your actions, and you even saved the USS Appalachia from being destroyed. So, overall, there are now more survivors and ships that survived as well as a result of your actions. So we are now officially, definitely, within an alternative timeline. So who knows what happens from here on in. But that's the point. We're making our own story here. And so with the Borg cube defeated before it was able to actually get too close to Earth, the established events of the Battle of Sector 001 have now occurred. The Borg cube was destroyed, but not before it launched a sphere that then opened a time tunnel, essentially, and disappeared through it. Not long after it did, the Enterprise E disappeared in after it, after it leaving the remainder of the fleet, the Navis included, with whatever came next. And what came next? was a distress signal from the colony on Luna, or the moon as we know it these days. And that's pretty much where we are. So before we jump into uh, the next part of the episode, um, was there anything folks wanted to bring up? Some points that uh, you need reminding of, or that I need reminding of, excuse me, before we uh, push on. I don't think I think I've gotten uh, I think everything at this done. Point, our captain has a uh, conversation they needed to they wanted to have with Starfleet Command about a certain admiral, if I remember correctly. That's which right. Why they might be slightly indisposed. Right, 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 right. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, the tactics of Fleet Admiral Hayes, I do believe. Yes. Fleet Admiral Hayes were very seriously in question. It started off well, but Hayes seemed a bit too eager to try and climb aboard the Borg Cube and, uh, and nick whatever wasn't screwed down. And unfortunately fell for the Borg's ruse, and as a result, he and the most of his crew uh, got, uh, got, got sadly um, killed and or seriously hurt so as a result but because of your actions the uh you have towed the madison away from the uh, the blast radius so at least the madison itself the admiral's flagship uh, has also survived so that it can at least be rebuilt and if there are any surviving crew on board they can of course be rescued so yes good point well made captain andrews uh, lodged 
a very, very, shall we say, vociferous, I like that word, um, opinion of Admiral Hayes's battle strategy, and as such is probably going to be spending the remainder of this episode uh, voicing said opinion to Starfleet Command. But, as I said, in the meanwhile, you have a distress signal to answer. So the remainder of the fleet, which is the Navis, the Thunderchild, the Endeavour, and the Appalachia, are the only uh, four starships of the entire fleet remaining that are in any kind of working order. I hasten to note that at the, uh, as the battle against the Borg started, 51 starships, 52 if we include the Navis, uh, actually took part in the entire conflict, and only four of them have managed to survive, so... Yikes. Nevertheless, here we are going for <coughs> the moon. So I'm just going to bring us to uh, the map for the Battle of Sector 001 so we can see the devastation that was left. Now, uh, as I said, the distress signal is coming from the Lunar Conley. And at the moment, uh, your communications officer is a bit unsure as to what's actually uh, going on. So, uh, do, 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 let's change the ambience a little bit here. So, like I inter indicated, the Navis and the Thunderchild of the Endeavour and the Appalachia are the four ships that are still uh, more or less operational. There were Oberth class ships that were operating on the periphery of the fleet engagement because they were basically scrambling communications so that the entire fleet could communicate without the Borg listening in. But uh, they were neutralized partway through the battle and so had to back away. And Oberth class ships aren't exactly much when it comes to um, taking care of any problem that might be going on on Lunar Colony at the moment. <laughs> What's the status of the Endeavour? Right. The Endeavour is mostly functional, but it has taken uh, quite a bit of damage. Uh, it's got a crew members who are probably... Uh, it's, it's, the reports back from them are that they have got crew a lot of crew who are injured. Their weapon systems are basically out, but they still have uh, functioning sensors and transporters, life support, a propulsion, all that jazz. Likewise, the Thunderchild took one hell of a whack from the uh, the Borg, whilst it was just the Navis and the Thunderchild holding the Borg back. As such, the Thunderchild is mostly out of all of its armaments. The Appalachia is mostly intact because you um, you intervened and saved it, so they're not as bad. Um, they're a smaller ship than all three of your ships, the other three ships, I should say, um, and as a result, uh, functionally a bit mm, less uh, tuned, as it were, to to uh, major. Uh, major evacuation engagements, if that's what's needed with regards to what's going on on Lunar Colony. Uh, it's a steamrunner class, so it's a uh, smaller, lighter, faster attack craft, mostly based around sensors and its engines. Whereas the Endeavour, being a nebula class, has actually got um, its uh, the, the Endeavour's mission pod is mostly to do with advanced sensors, high resolution sensors, and uh, reaction control systems. So, overall, okay. that's what you know, the current state of the ships that you have at your disposal. So, right. <clears throat> the uh, captain of the Endeavour, uh, which I believe is Captain Amasov. Yes. Captain Amasov is the captain in charge of the Endeavour. You also have Captain Evelyn Hoffman in charge of the Thunderchild and Captain Erica Benteen in charge of the Appalachia. So uh, each of the captains request a hail with yourselves, a joint conference, as it were. So let's take you to the bridge.
So, uh, on the screen you have got uh, a shared kind of conference call going on with um, the other captains of the uh, remaining ship, remainder ships in the fleet. The They have all, like you, received the um, distress call from Lunar Colony. Apparently, though, according to the Appalachia, the distress signal seems to be originating from Tycho City itself on Luna, so it's actually the capital city there. The primary colony. Right. Now, sorry, go on. It does seem like the Navis is going to be the best suited to deal with this problem, um, but before we uh, depart the uh, battlefield, is there any assistance that any of your ships need in order to uh, handle the remaining survivors and escape pods. Okay, so let's see. The Endeavour reports that they are badly damaged and don't have the personnel to help, but their scanner array is still the most powerful of the fleet. So they can offer to link up their scanner <coughs> array to all the other ships so that they can use it. Uh, the Thunderchild being an Akira class has lots of shuttles and small craft that can be used for evacuations and for um, obviously uh, snagging of escape pods and whatnot if you want to leave those to do it and like i said the um, appalachia is a smaller craft that's mostly both based around its sensors and its increased uh, more is more capable engines so that's what you've got to uh for, to field as it were. So if there were any of those that you would prefer to field to the uh, issue of nabbing escape pods and whatnot, then perhaps the Appalachia? It sounds like the Appalachia is probably best for retrieving and the uh, Endeavour is probably best to coordinate. Hmm. Um, Doctor, any... Uh, Anything we can uh, do to assist the uh, Endeavour to allow them to coordinate this? Well, I hasten to note that at this point in time you have received a distress call from the yep. capital city of Luna Colony, therefore anything that's going on down there, considering that it's mostly civilians down there, might end up being a priority. So, again, I'm not saying don't do Rob maybe will, sending... But I'm help towards the endeavor but there's also that consideration to make yeah the uh, the doctor will say the he could, he's had well he's had his i imagine he's gonna have had his medical staff and triage and emergency teams basically on standby the moment we stepped into a, uh, a star system with a ball cube present so they're all ready to jump in wherever they needed at your command so I suppose the question becomes how many of your uh, medical staff would you be prepared to send the Endeavour's way in order to assist them? Or would you prefer to keep them here on the Navis first for when you determine the scale of whatever's going on down in Tycho City? I think the... the yeah. The majority of them, I think, would be ready for Tycho City because, like you said, um, the civilians are our first priority. But I think um, at least sending over a team to relieve some of the pressure if they've got a huge amount of casualties and um, not um, not enough, um, or if they're lacking medical staff to be able to deal with those casualties. Right. How far of a trip is Tycho City from this battlefield? Minutes. You're probably angling towards it okay. right now, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. In which case... Um, Doctor, if we put uh, your med team at their disposal yeah. um, and make it so that we can uh, shuttle uh, patients to your sick bay as required? Uh, yeah, I'll put my uh, sickbay on standby and ready. Okay. Right. 
and we'll put our one of our runabouts on uh, at the dock's disposal for patients. Okay. Probably noted. best we can do. And it has been noted that or Ori does look good in a nurse's uniform, so he's willing <laughs> to help out wherever, apparently. I'll bet you are. Nevertheless, uh, it doesn't take you long to actually uh, <laughs> come into orbit of uh, the lunar colony on the moon, and um, the with the Endeavour feeding all of the ships of the fleet uh, their sensor data, what becomes very obvious is there's a lot of movement going on down in Tycho City where a lot of people seem to be rushing towards the starport as quickly as a spaceport, pardon me, in mass numbers. So it looks like there's a bit of an evacuation or something going on down there. But there's also, worryingly enough, this massive bubble of some kind of energy that's, um, that seems to have apparently appeared in the middle of the city. And seems to be the epicenter from which all these people are fleeing. So, right. doesn't take you long to reach orbit and you've got that information. At the moment, um, communication to the surface is, is strange. It's, it's crackling full of static and interference. Your, uh, your communications officers are having a hard time getting any solid communications to or from. It said it's almost like there's multiple multiple communication signals um, coming from all at once, which could conceivably be an aftermath of the battle <coughs> itself that happened not far from here because there was an awful lot of com traffic flying around the place, not to mention all the random uh, energy signatures that were being thrown out by the Borg to try and um, confuse uh, your sensors and your communications and stuff like that during the course of the battle. So, uh, Lieutenant Keshen says that he will work on it to clear up as best <coughs> he can. Do we want to actually be on the lookout for any sign of Borg uh, signals or drones down there in case they manage to, uh, in the confusion, throw a couple onto Luna? Because it would be typical of them to actually sneak something up on when the battle's going south for them in the hope of creating a sort of holding position and growing in numbers for an attack on Earth when our attention was elsewhere. A beachhead kind of thing. Hmm. Basically, yeah. Okay. In that case, that seems to me like a good reason for Ori to use his station to scan Luna for anything suspicious just so we can get some momentum in the pool so mike if you could do me the biggest favor <laughs> yeah he's scanning do me the biggest favor and give me a uh, control and science check with your focus of sensors and can we have um alex can we have you be the navis please and we're doing sensors and security for the navis Remembering that the Navis counts as having a focus in uh, in what we're doing. Uh, Two successes, uh, nice, very good, Mike. Very, very good. Addition. Well done, Ori. Where is it? Navis, Navis, Navis. Uh, was it sensors and what? Sorry. Sensors and security. Security. Science, baby. Oh, nice. The Navis and the science officer come through. Right for that. One, two, three. <clears throat> Okie dokie, then. What you're getting is that there's a very... There's, there's some kind of anomaly on the planet. On the moon, I should say. It's not the planetoid. That's, like I, like I said, seems to be centered on an area within Tycho City itself. Um, from this distance, the amount of interference it's throwing off makes it difficult to quantify, but it certainly has um, strange energy signatures going on on it. But with that amount of successes, what you also get is that the field is expanding. So whatever's going on down there, uh, it seems that the people, the life signs that you've got in Tycho City are lots of people, probably the... Uh, 
the occupants of Tycho City are fleeing from this field, whatever it is, this expanding field, and they seem to be uh, heading towards the major evacuation point, which makes sense to be the spaceport. So, with that in mind, um, yeah, the Endeavour still has sensors it can use. The, uh, the Thunderchild volunteers to use their extensive shuttle bays and their extensive number of small craft to um, start shepherding uh, civilians up, if needs be, to help with the evacuation effort, which leaves you guys the ability to investigate what might actually be going on down there. So, this sounds like an away team mission. And I think I need to call upon my two best lieutenants. So the captain is technically still going to be here on the ship. Actually, coordinating yeah, the captain's efforts, here, so. so let's go out on away mission. Um, right. All right. Um, who do you need for figuring out what the hell, what on earth's going on down there? Well, what on Luna is going on down there? <laughs> Let's see, um, Ori has got computers, warp field dynamics, quantum physics and sensors, so he's in not a bad spot himself to be able to help. Uh, do, 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 and pheromones, of course, let's not forget the pheromones. Um, I'm not that sure that's a positive, but we'll take it. <laughs> and Edwards, as usual, has his uh, metallurgical and experimental, ancient technology, that kind of stuff. So he's good for anything that doesn't fall within the normal parameters of science, which also um, falls into uh, Nova's bag as well, with um, her ability of pulling things apart and putting things back together. Not to mention shields and infiltration. So the usual gang does suggest themselves. Obviously, if there's anything, uh, anybody that needs... Uh, medical assistance or whatever down there, then obviously the doctor is a good choice. So it yep. comes down to if you think you need someone else to go with you guys. So this comes down to whether or not you want to employ a supporting character or more. Now in that regard, during the battle itself, I can just find it, I just got another communique. We can bring some medical moss, says Mike. <laughs> Absolutely. What do you mean, can? You, you think I've ever not got the moss on? Uh, during the battle, we have only employed one of our supporting characters, which was um, pretty much uh, Bravo, Chief Engineer. Um, so you've still got the other five... Uh, supporting characters per episode that you can employ. So you have got choice. You have certainly got choice. So if you guys fancy taking any supporting characters, now would be the time to have a look. Mono is amazing. Your boy Mono. Quantum mechanics, subspace mechanics, sensor operation. Yep. Yeah. If you want to do science related stuff, if you wanted security, then of course you've got your chief of security, or of course, apparently Mr. Monoko now counts as security <laughs> for some reason. He's over there on the security side of things. Or Anson Natik. He should really be promoted after today, I think. I think we need to promote Ensign Natik. He's been an Ensign for too long. His efforts need to be recognised. Of course, if Webby were here, he would volunteer about... Kef. What we don't know about is the Natik's off-duty activities is why he's not been promoted yet. Well, okay. He They're spawned eggs that her. one time. <laughs> I know, but she was an ambassador. All right, fault. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, who knew that... <laughs> Who knew that, uh, is he, or is he again? Yeah, who knew that Deltons and um, Zindi insectoids were compatible? Well, if anyone was going to find out, it would have been Ori. <laughs> Natik's just the ultimate wingman. No, he's got wings. <laughs> yes, <laughs> <but so. laughs> 
In any case, um, well, I'm assuming the usual gaggle of, uh, of, of you guys, just do you want to take any extras? If you want to take Mono, then you've got points enough to dip into taking Mono. If you want to take Hello, if you want to take Bravo of Security or Natik or anyone else, you certainly have the, um, the allowance to do so. But here we have our core five. Do you want to take anybody else? <clears throat> Bearing in mind that if you do take a supporting character, yeah. uh, they will be an uncontrolled supporting character and therefore will not be able to take their own actions if initiative is called for. Uh, they can only assist. But that means you'll have someone who can assist you with certain things like shooting and or science if you take one of the science guys too so it's entirely up to you guys what you would like to do and who you would like to bring along that also brings to mind what equipment you would like to take with you too I'm taking my normal collection of medical equipment and moss equipment I was thinking more along the lines of things um, like um, security armor or um, phasers or... Yeah, I'm um, be taking the phaser rifle. So if you want to upgrade your armaments, I mean, you're still technically on a combat footing after the, the, the Borg battle in, uh, <coughs> in space, so... A portable science lab. Dear boy, that's what a tricorder is for. Well, actually, no, that's, that's not strictly true, is it? A tricorder is an instrument, is a sensor tool. So, no, you're quite right, actually. You need to be able to take a lab with you. With lounge chairs. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Ahem. <laughs> so, yeah, um, do you guys remember where the uh, list of items that you can... I mean... Technically, if you can think of an item even that isn't listed in the equipment uh, in the equipment lists, uh, they count as being a an equipment trait that you can take along with you. So, don't feel hamstrung by the fact that you can't necessarily uh, find a piece of equipment in the Actually, items lists. So, I'll give you a couple of moments to have a good perusal. If you go to the items directory under second edition, you can find under tools and portable items as well as uh, character weapons and character armor if you want to go those ways. Okay, um, this does lead us to the other question to ask. Um, is anything interfering with transporters at the moment? Not currently, no. Are we planning to use uh, the, the transporter targeting things as weapons again, or are we good? <laughs> well, that's an interesting question, isn't it? That was a fairly <laughs> unique um, situation, I have to say. But, you know, as far as improvised weaponry goes, <laughs> if you want to take pattern enhancers with you for the possibility of spearing somebody with them like javelins... And I won't bemoan you the equipment. Okay. Anybody think we need to secure? We need security on this trip. Are we well armed enough? Uh, the doctor's only taking his basic phaser because doctor. I'm a doctor, not a warrior. Uh, Mike, since you're currently communicating with us via the uh, the, the medium of text, um, how armed does or I want to be? He's typing, folks. <laughs> nope, badly timed. Can we take Cutie Bravo of security? He could take his favor. Uh, maybe he would take his phaser. Maybe an Enviro suit. Maybe an Enviro suit. Okay. That's not a bad call for security to take an Enviro suit, especially on the moon. Well, I mean, the rest of us go, um, nah, we'll be fine. <laughs> uh, in that case, let me bring in Bravo of security. 
or I would take a phaser. So I'm imagining a bigger phaser than the standard issue one, so let's find you a Type 2. Character weapon. Yeah, give them both rifles. <laughs> Do you trust Ori with a phaser rifle? <laughs> it's all about the recoil. <laughs> Don't trust him. All right, let's give you a Type 2, then, and see how we do. Um, does Ori want any kind of armor, or just the Enviro suit? Ooh, armor. Okay. Let's play it safe, then, shall we? Because uh, character armor, you can take an armored vest or body armor. Security uh. armor, so... Vibers is taking body armor, but is not taking an Enviro suit. Right. You want it because it's security. a dome city, and I want to show that we ha we are not scared. So um, you seem to be okay for the idea of uh, Bravo, Chief of Security, taking an environment suit. Or are we going I'm back to the body armor I'm side of things? I'm happy with that because it means that we can. If we need to send somebody outside, we can if no one else wants to take them. Okay. But what's Nova think? Or what's Edwards think? Can we follow your lead, Commander? <clears throat> okay. Um, yeah, I think his talents could be useful, don't they? Alright, so... Right, you want an environment suit for uh, Nova? That was my next question. Do Edwards and Nova want any kind of armor or protection, or are they good with what they've got? No, I think she's good with uh, what we've got. Okay. Nova yeah, tends to travel light. Free movement. What about Edwards? <laughs> armor for you, uh, gents. Probably. I can I can see a spacewalk in a potential future with the uh, trait. Let's try something risky if it comes down to it. So you want the environment suit rather than the body armor? Yes, please. Okay, <clears throat> there you go. <clears throat> All right, is everybody good with the equipment loadout that they've got? Yep. <laughs> Bearing in mind, as long as the transporters stay active, you've still got access to the other ships, including your own if you need to call in extra equipment. So, uh, let's get you down to the surface then, shall we? And let's bring you to more or less here. Paste. Please paste. Didn't paste. Okay, let me grab you. There was a transporter accident. There was indeed. There was a. De we apologise for the delay in our service. There we go. Beep. So everybody lands. So you land in the spaceport of Tycho City. <coughs> You are immediately surrounded, not surrounded exactly, but people are um, pushing past you with uh, lots and lots of civilians who are heading in the opposite direction from where you are currently going. Everybody seems to be pouring in from this direction and going off in this direction following the path. So there are certainly uh, more than a few people who are fighting to get past at the moment, although there do appear to be a pair of individuals kind of stood almost century at the um, the uh, lights. They're shepherding, they appear to be shepherding uh, the civilians past them and urging those who are not quite with them yet to keep it moving, keep it moving. There is a uh, woman in a civilian administrator's outfit and a uh, human male in what looks like Starfleet operations uniform. Is it probably so, an idea to head to the Starfleet guy to, uh, so he can give us a brief on what the hell's going on? Yeah, entirely up to you, but that would probably be a good idea. Yep. So, you have full control of your character tokens. Feel free to use them. Is 
Lieutenant Commander Bravo will, of course, pardon me, follow your lead. So if you want to get to the, whoever's in charge here. It's going to be the first officer, of course. So, yes, uh, this zigzagging path you're having to take is, of course, representative of the fact that you have to push through people as you're trying to um, urge them to keep on moving, keep on moving. Lots of people have got a very panicked look on their face. But you do eventually get to this area here, so you've got the uh, female lady in an administrator's outfit. Oh, thank God, Starfleet, she says. I'm Administrator Kader. Um This is my um, Starfleet colleague, Lieutenant Van Leer. We were hoping we'd get someone to respond to our distress call. Um, what seems to be the problem, uh, Administrator? We're not exactly certain. The uh, We were keeping a very close eye on the battle that was going on just over Earth, <coughs> and there was this big flash. It just seemed to encompass everything then as soon as the uh, that that flash went we started getting uh, garbled communications from several of our security staff and we were then getting people running towards the starport from what we've been able to tell we're getting we're getting scattered reports of of some kind of energy field more importantly though we've been getting reports of people who get swallowed up by this energy field, they just seem to disappear, vanish, the moment it touches them. So we sounded the evacuation order and tried to get as many people here as possible before the field reaches the spaceport. How, how long until, do we have until it reaches the point where we can't evacuate anymore? Van Leer steps forward at this point. Um, Lieutenant Van Leer, uh, I suppose I now count as head of security for uh, for the for the city. My uh, my predecessor was in one of the buildings when the field. Um, uh, anyway, um, we're not sure, but it's expanding at a uh, an increasing commensurate rate. We might have an hour, maybe two at most, before uh, the entirety of Tycho City is, is just enveloped in whatever this field is. We've been getting scattered communications coming from inside the field before it got too immense for us to get any more signals through, but there are people how trapped many, on the other side of there, I think. How many support craft do you have in the <clears throat> starport at the moment? Um... Not many. Uh, we dispatched most of them to start ferrying people off here to wherever's closest and easiest, which in this case is Earth. Right. Um, redirect your next batch. How many people are we talking it's in the city that can be evacuated? The time? Um, well, it entirely depends on the capacity of the shuttles that uh, to, to land in the spaceport to help us evacuate people. Um, there is, of course, uh, the amount of people that uh, any of your starships can beam up at any one particular point in time. Um, our own transporters are having uh, a funny time of transporting people up. There's, there's some kind of weird interference going on in the power grid. Well, that's probably because the power grid is the other side of the... Uh, our main uh, generator, I mean, is, is the other side of the energy bubble. But it's still providing energy. For the moment, but it's... It's it's weird. It's like... Um, uh, I, I, it's, it's been a while since I did my stint in engineering. But um, it, it's, it's, it's almost like uh, the, 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 the plasma from the EPS is, is <coughs> diluted in some way. It's, it's, it's like... It's, it's like our EPS conduits are trying to shuttle uh, two different types of fuel along the power lines. But we've been too busy with the evacuation to give it any more of an examination. If you like, I can take you okay. to the last position where the, uh, the the field was coming up to. Yeah, I think we need... That oh. sounds like a good point. Give me one second. I'll see what assistance we can give you work with your evacuation. <clears throat> yes, sir. Uh, Vibers to Navis. 
Uh, it was going to be, uh, who Thank have we got? Who have we got? So, Keshin, Richard, or... <laughs> so, let's see, it's going to be Keshin, in it? So where is Keshin's voice? It's like, oh, was it Trauma Medic? It was Trauma Medic. Let me load the voice changer. It's still loading. <laughs> there we go. Here, Commander. Right. Um, we need to get some evacuation. We need to assist with the evacuation of Tycho City as much as possible. Um, uh, could you put our shuttlecraft and uh, ship at their disposal to get as many people off the ground and uh, somewhere safe as we can? Absolutely, Commander. We'll start organizing the efforts now. Um, Doctor, anything you want to add into this one? Um, the uh, sick bay, as I've said, is um, ready to receive uh, pe receive people and um, evacuees, especially injured priority. Any with any injuries or other anomalous signs um, going into sick bay being scattered. Um, also have the sick bay, anyone they receive, scan them for any anomalies. I'm a little bit concerned of the weird pollutant the the lieutenant mentioned. The Navis also does have the distinct um, advantage of not only having a sick bay, but having medical suites on the uh, deck below. So you've got a pretty hefty capacity with which you can uh, take care of injured. So uh, yeah, the Navis is probably one of the better ships you've got in the fleet for uh, taking care of medical uh, emergencies and triage. So yeah, that's a good call there. All right then. So, uh, do, 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 do. so, uh, Lieutenant Van Leer volunteers to lead you guys to the last known point where the field was seen to be uh, expanding towards. Apparently, the uh, city square. So he's willing to lead you guys in that direction. I just have to check which tokens are already there. All right. So we want you guys to be going. And we can't forget Bravo of security. Let's see, where can I put you? Oh, excellent. Let's just flip the order around a little bit. Bravo keeping it behind you. All right, then. Okay, so you managed to eventually get to Tycho City Square, and there are still people uh, fleeing the general area. And as you manage to turn a corner into the uh, square proper, you do see up close what everybody is talking about, this shimmering weird field that at present has managed to come about as far as here. So the civilians are still very much fleeing away from it but I'm gonna move them out of the way for the moment because they are taking another direction from yourselves lieutenant van Leer says that um, you know they're still trying to evacuate as many people as possible but communications nearer to the anomaly are spotty at best so this gives you a very small amount of time with which to have a look at the field before it starts expanding again. So Van Leer offers to cover you. Bravo will probably do the same. Actually, that's a bit too far for Bravo. Let's uh, put him there. So, <coughs> what would you like to do? I would suggest science. Are there any of the power lines uh, that were mentioned earlier we can scan to see if we can work out what this second sort of uh, reading that the lieutenant mentioned is? 
Um, you can have a go, certainly. Um, power line. So let's see. Nearest area is probably going to be one. Ah, that's, that's an escalator, pardon me. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. I mean, if you tap into any of the lights, you should be able to see. So anybody who wants to can give me a reason and engineering test. Uh, those who have got specialties in power systems of some stripe or variety can uh, lend their expertise. I will make this difficulty two. So nominate whoever you want to nominate to be the leader and the helper assistant of the group. All right, excuse me. Helper, who's taking the lead? <laughs> this is mostly going to be somebody who's got a reasonably good, pardon me, engineering. So. Um. No, if it doesn't have specifically power systems, which you've got in the workings. That's true. Yeah, right. Fibers does have power systems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fiber tried to get someone else to do it. Looks like. <laughs> I was trying not to be not for it not to be the Vibers show for the entire episode, but oh well. No, no, that's fine. We can we can. Uh... Right, I can I can run it. Who wants to assist? Nova's got inner workings. I mean, anybody else? Uh, Ori is usually on, up for. Ori, Ori's up. Ori has three in engineering. Ori's okay. willing to. Ori and Nova to assist. Okay. <laughs> All right then. So, like I said, reason and engineering. Anybody who's got uh, foci related to power systems, or indeed, as Nova, in Nova's case, inner workings, can. Uh, have a good old look to see if they can identify what's going on with the power. So, uh, like I said, difficulty two. Oh, that's one already. Well done, all right. If Nova would like to give us uh, your one dice. Mm -hmm. Smashing. Okay, yeah. Nice, nice, nice. And... Vibers. <laughs> he says he doesn't want to make it the Viber show, and then he rolls four successes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, damn. Okay. <laughs> so, yes, with Vibers and with Ori and Nova working together, you prize apart some of the, um, the, 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 the lighting. The light pole where it reaches into the ground, which is where you have to get to if you want to get to the power, uh, the, the, the uh, power systems. Because you know, future future tech means that you hide all of that uh, wiring and whatnot, especially if you've got a civilian uh, city square like this. But nevertheless, you definitely find that there are like there are two different plasma power streams running through the city grid, essentially. Um, there's the one you expect to see, which is the Federation standard, but there's also this uh, this secondary plasma stream, essentially, that uh, is a lot more... Mm, now, I don't want to say refined, because it's not, but it certainly has a higher power output, but seems to be composed of... Um, plasma the they've, they've made it in whoever made this and it obviously does show signs of being artificial whoever made this made some really high energy plasma as a result um they in having that running through a federation power system is no wonder the the systems here in the city are on the fritz because they're not actually used to dealing with such focused high energy plasma so the fact that the grid is still going is a testament to the uh, you know the federation uh, ethos of creating technology that lasts but um it won't well, take much if that if that ratio 
of the high energy plasma towards the standard energy plasma starts to tip too far in one direction, then you are looking at potential burnout of the uh, of the entire power grid. So now, in dumb terms, it's like somebody uh, plugged, plugged the phaser banks into the power grid. Yeah, I suppose uh, you could put it that than... way, yeah. <clears throat> oh dear. Now, uh, I will allow folks who want to do it to give me a reason and science check for scanning the field itself. And this is going to involve anybody who has any foci in in the weird and wonderful uh, realms of science. So we're definitely talking all right. <laughs> this mic's there going... Uh, anybody else who has anything um, vaguely weird and wonderful well, as far Mike, as out there ask, science goes? <clears throat> you need to ask the usual question. Unless biotechnology in that counts. Uh, uh, afraid like not. No, no, they they do... Metallurgy or experimental technology. Hmm, let me think. Um, I think experimental tech will definitely work here. So it's science and reason, did you say? Reason and science, yes, please. Hmm. Well done, Edwards. So, Mike, if you would care to roll two dice. Or, oh, even better. Good lordy looks. All right, then. So, <laughs> when you succeed at a task assisted by the ship's sensors or a task or a tricorder sensor, you may ask one additional question. All right, then. Is there a question you want to ask as a result of uh, scanning that? Well, let me give you what you find first, and then I will let you ask an additional question um, for free. All right. There are strong amounts of tachyons and chronometric particles emanating strongly from an area further into Tycho City. Mike's going to offer up the question to the group if folks want to think of a good question to ask based on the information and the success of the roles we've just made. So, this, once again, the uh, tricorder scan from uh, Ori and others has revealed uh, strong amounts of tachyons and chronometric particles that appear to be emanating from a spot further in from Tycho City. Isn't chronometric, isn't that time stuff? Yes. So it's the dot, yeah. Didn't the uh, Borg shoot something out when the Enterprise arrived? Uh... They did. Borg Sphere used chronometric particles to create some kind of time vortex. Yeah. Wonder, yeah. Does anyone else start to wonder, did they go back in time bury some sort of weapon in the, like, underneath where Tycho City would be in the past and then set it to actually go off once the battle was over? Is that your question? No. <laughs> A supposition, uh, I see. I got you. It's a supposition. <laughs> Conjecture. <laughs> it could potentially have just been an escape pod that got sent through time. Ah, good point. Like it's got their captain in it or something. So, is there a question you would like to use as if you had spent momentum on obtain information? Let's see what. Can we isolate that signal? Get a dearer area of the size of the emissions. Ooh. That is a good question. Would you like that to be your question? I'm fine with that. You isolate the signal and get an idea of the area of the size of the emission. Okay. Everybody else good with that question? Yep. Marvellous. Yeah. All right. So, uh, as well as the tachyons and chronometric particles, what you're also getting is a lot of tetrion radiation. And that is... Even though tetrions have a random momentum, the radiation um, is a measurable energy source at least. And so, uh, yes, from the amount of tetrion radiation emanating, uh, you can get an idea of where it is. It seems to be coming from a point within Tycho City's... Um, I mean, Lieutenant Van Leer can tell you. 
Where is it? It is in the... I have it on my notes somewhere and I can't find it when I look for it, which is typical. The Tycho, the the uh, with all those successes you've got, you've managed to get a very pinpoint, um, not most mostly very very accurate idea of where the epicenter of this is, thanks to the amount of tetrions coming out and the radiation thereby. So it seems to be localized, according to Van Leer, on the Tycho Institute of Scientific Advancement. Now, it's less likely to be enemy action, and it's more likely to be uh, scientists. <sighs> now, the amount of tetrion radiation coming out, um, Edwards and Ori both looking at the results of the uh, the uh, tricorder scan. Since tetrions only exist in subspace. It suggests there might very well be a subspace <laughs> tear <laughs> in that vicinity. <laughs> so, um, this now depends entirely on what you would like to attempt next. Do you want to see if you can slow down or stop the expanding field? Or or do you want to see if there's a way that you could enter into the bubble without being disappeared? Or or would you just like to walk through and see what happens? Or something else that I haven't thought of. This is just me throwing out ideas. Um, the make the making uh, modifying something so we can actually survive by going in intrigues me specifically because I was wondering could we modify one of the environmental suits hmm. okay hmm. Uh, let me see then so uh, do, 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 that's do, do, an idea I'm throwing out I'm not yeah, saying yeah. It. That's to, it's, it's um, to the, the group Bertrand's considering having some of his samples of moss put them in the way of the thing and then be scanning them to see if he can see any potential negative or devastating effects that this, uh, effects this thing might have on biological matter Interesting, which will build on what Orion Edwards have already found. D Davis, were you going to say something there? Um, the only thing I was going to say is if we do go into it, um, I'll be sending a message up to the Navis of if you don't hear from us in X amount of time, um, put the diff assign the deflection <clears throat> to something that will get rid of this subspace field and point it here, please. Let's okay. not lose the entire solar system. All right, then. So Bertram is going to plant some of his uh, special moss in the path of the field and get a reading of what happens to it when it does. Cool. Yep. I am good with that. <clears throat> okay, then. So the doctor sacrifices some of his moss, takes a run up, puts it down in the uh, visibly expanding field and then runs back and everyone keeps their tricorders very much trained on the thing. Um, in light of all the uh, momentum you've got and the successes that you have gained so far... Yeah. One moment. Not the moss. <laughs> yes, the moss. The moss is always helpful. <laughs> well, I, I say I'm always. Surpri I'm surprised people are still surprised whenever Bertrand says, I'm going to try something with the moss. Um, <clears throat> let me think. We're not making moss humanoids. We've already broached that idea. <clears throat> We're pretty sure that's going to be how this all ends. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Right, so the moment the field envelops, or touches, I should say, the, um, the moss... Yep. There's a... You register a partial activation of the moss's energy leeching capabilities before they just kind of disappear in a flash. The readings you got on your tricorders for a moment there suggest that the the quantum resonance of the moss changed so that they ceased to exist in this space-time continuum. But more than likely uh, with the fact that they essentially their their quantum signature shifted 
it would suggest that um, whatever's on the other side of that field is potentially an alternative timeline. So your moss has now been essentially translated into that alternative timeline. One small step for man, but a giant leap for the fields of mycology. And now Aura is very keen to investigate. <laughs> <clears throat> yep. I'll share that information with the rest of the team. So in light of that... <laughs> hold me back, Doc. <clears throat> The Starfleet officer, show some restraint. In light of that, what would you like to attempt next? Slow it, stop it, or find a way of getting inside of it yourselves. As dangerous as it seems, it looks as whatever's going on is happen is on the other side and it's emitting stuff out through the power lines. I'm not certain how we're going to stop it without going in there. No, plus, saying, what, what plus, um, would reflect or neutralize? Was it chronot? Not chronot, um, tetrions. To answer um, Mike's question as well, actually, can you observe any changes in the moss you just did? It seems to uh, get translated into uh, an alternative time stream. So you appear to have an alternative timeline encroaching onto yours. On a cellular or a well, on a total level. <laughs> so, um, are we going with the previous idea of trying to find some way to get inside of it? No? I think... Yes? I mean, well, the doctor is one of the ways we may have to. Plus, if we can find a way to safely get in and then come back out, we may still be able to rescue the people who have disappeared. Okay. Um, there would be civilians inside it, right? Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Just as the doctor said as well. Might be people still trapped. Well, apparently, there are people still trapped. Okay. Is there no yeah, uh, is there any like empathic link to people that still trapped, or is that being blocked? Interesting by... question. Good point. Good point. Um, no, there isn't. But there's there's a lot of what you would equate to static. Now that could just as easily be a form of telepathic interference from the fact that there's another timeline encroaching on yours. So. It's entirely possible that since this is basically bending time and space, um, your usual empathic senses are having trouble penetrating into it because essentially you're in a you're in a different time stream to whatever's on the other side. So you would have to find some way of entering into, collaborating with that alternative timeline to get any kind of clear signal from it, you reckon. Can we tell the rate of time passing on that side? Not currently, no. It's an alternative timeline rather than an alternative universe, or reality, I will say, which can equate to essentially the same thing, I admit. There's that whole um, quantum physics issue of if you do go back in time and you change something then essentially are you from that point forward creating an, a, a new parallel universe but we're not going to get into that so that's that way a headache lies I hope we meet giant space Abraham Lincoln well it, if it happened to Kirk it could happen to you guys so who knows but for the meantime, if you want to be able to get to the other side of that, you're going to have to find some way of uh, being able to interact with it. So... My best thought would be those of you who are very good at tinkering with science are going to have to try and find a way of using phase discriminators to create a stable field around yourselves so that you can enter into that alternative timeline without becoming part of it. Because you imagine the translation um, is 
probably not pleasant. And the longer you are in that alternative timeline, the more you are probably going to become part of it, almost, so getting out is, is problematic. Whips out portable science lab. Yes, indeed. <laughs> So uh, this is going to be part science, part engineering, because you're basically going to have to adapt, well, the EVA suits and um, to a certain extent your weapon systems, if you can sacrifice a phaser or two, like the smaller phasers, because phasers, if I recall, do have phase discriminators on them. So you could, by sacrificing like a type 1 phaser's uh, phase discriminator, you could use it to create a small localized uh, phase field around yourselves. But that's going to require a bit of funky tech. Yes, Gareth? I was going to say, I've got a Type 1 if we want to sacrifice that. I think most folks have got our weapon that can be sacrificed. Um, here's a Type 2 you can sacrifice while I uh, have my sound gun that I picked up. <laughs> Yeah. <clears throat> and while you're figuring out how we're going to get in there, I'm going to coordinate with the navis how we're going to horribly destroy this thing when it all goes horribly wrong. <laughs> yeah, it, you do have some quantum in, torpedoes left. This might involve quantum torpedoes and it <clears throat> might involve the uh, deflector dish spraying anti chronotons of the entire of the moon. Okay. Overkill is an option when it's a plan B. <laughs> so those, so probably Nova with tinkering, likely Edwards with experimental tech can probably uh, get to work on this. Building on Ori and Edwards' success previously, you're going to have to modify phase discriminators to create some temporary, temporal field. So this is going to be difficulty two, I'm going to say. So I'm not sure which one of you wants to lead this and which one of you wants to assist. I'll leave that up to the two of you. I mean, Sean, does Nova feel like leading this? Cause, or do you want to leave it to Mr. Experimental Tech himself? I didn't say anything else, so I guess I'll leave. Okay. <laughs> I missed part of that. What was that? Nova's going to lead. Okay. So There's Edwards can definitely assist. That. So reason and engineering yeah. this is going to be. Uh, I will let uh, Nova use daring in engineering because you're pulling out parts of weaponry in order to begin <laughs> use as a, as a as a temporal field generator. Uh, sorry. Ooh, didn't need assistant after all. There we are then. Nice, nice, nice. Good, good, good. And some class good rolls from uh, Nova too. So yes. All right. So with Bravo and Van Leer uh, looking on, keeping uh, the area covered, you guys start pulling components out of some sacrificial um, phases in order to um, pull apart their phase discriminators. So there are enough for each of you guys, for all six of you, the power packs will last maybe an hour or so, so you've got a limited amount of time before they degrade to the point. <laughs> it's still probably going to be possible to cross over and to um, without these phase discriminators, but it probably won't be pleasant at all to do so. It's probably going to result in damage to you on the cellular level as your uh, as, as your um, cell's quantum signature is flipped or whatever to whatever's going on in that time stream. So it takes you a little bit but not too long before you get those phase discriminators uh, ready but that's just as soon as you do a cry goes up from Van Leer that you have got incoming. And that's when from the shimmering field itself a lot of Borg drones appear so I'm gonna throw you guys into an issue I'm gonna add these guys into an issue as well now like I said before um, 
Bravo, Chief of Security, does not is not able to operate in his own initiative turn because he is a supporting character, is not being controlled by a player, but he can assist. So anybody who wants to use Bravo to assist them in any kind of combat capacity can do. So we are going to begin this combat round as the uh, Borg emerge from the field. <coughs> So, uh, who of you wants to go first? Someone claims I was a handgun, huh? <laughs> I was going to say, if nobody volunteers, then gun. Nova yeah, is at top of initiative. I'd say, less to do with finding a species, the more is just overpowering their um, units. Uh, their yes. Units, their implants. Which, Which uh, Edwards has done before. We already ha know the setting for setting them up for Borg, from what yes. you found before, so... I'm going to assume we're up. already tuned that, that, that to that number a, of... That was a setting. How far can I push it? We okay. crank it up to 11. <laughs> this one goes to 11. I, well, I was going to say, it doesn't even have an 11. Apparently it does now. So, yeah. it it's now. Written, I it's written 11 in um, Sharpie uh, pen on the right of the dial. Alright then. So I take it then that means Commander Vibus is going first. Yeah, trying to use the sound gun. Yeah. Alright um, then. So, I don't remember if I did it or not, but... Uh, no, I didn't. So it's fine. You can use your minor action to move wherever you want to move, or indeed to draw the thing in the first place. <clears throat> so draw it, aim it. Fire it. That's the one. Nice, nice, nice. Now, these guys have got no cover whatsoever, and with a sound gun, they don't count as having cover ever, so that's quite useful. In that regard, so you've got the two successes needed in order to use it. Now then, if we have a look, excuse me, at personal combat. When you succeed at an attack with an area weapon, which the sound gun is, additional targets in the same, same zone may be hit by spending one momentum for each additional target. This attack may succeed at cost. You've got a full momentum pool, so every um, Borg drone beyond the first one that you have, uh, costs you a momentum point. <clears throat> three momentum to hit all four. Sounds good to me. All right, take three momentum from the pool then, please. <clears throat> all right then, so in a wonderfully catastrophic... Um, display of, uh, of, of of sound just doing its thing. The four Borg drones just stand there and get engulfed in this wave of sound energy as their implants start to sputter, spark, and essentially erupt. You manage to knock out uh, four Borg drones, but not before. Not quite Beethoven, but this does work well. <laughs> Beethoven. Not before more appear. <coughs> Which I will spend threat to do. Do. <coughs> so let me add them as well. Alright then, so that's Vibers having gone. Now it's a Borg turn unless you guys want to spend two momentum to keep the initiative. Bearing in mind you are now down to half your momentum pool. Going once, going twice. Alright, the ball go next. So, this guy is going to use his minor action to walk all the way up to the closest target, which in this case happens to be Van Leer. Now, <clears throat> um, for the weirdest moment, uh, especially Nova, but to a certain degree Ori as well, the Empaths, as this Borg drone starts leering forwards, um, you of course can hear at the back of your minds this that, that kind of horrible whispering that you'd heard during the entirety of the Battle of Sector 001. And, uh, which is no surprise considering that the, the drone is drawing closer, you can hear that whispering a bit more. But there's a tone to it that seems very familiar and 
you seem to come to this realization the same moment that Lieutenant Van Leer comes to the same realization. The Borg drone, now that you look past its implants, looks, well, basically like him. The shock of this, coming face to face with himself, means that Van Leer sudden is, is frozen for a moment with indecision, which allows the Borg drone to reach across and extend its uh, extend its assimilation tubules. But what happens next isn't what you expect. Rather than uh, the tubules injecting themselves into Van Leer and start to assimilate him, what happens next is an actual explosion. <laughs> so uh, I am going to have Nova and Vibers take uh, basically a single point injury, which you can avoid by spending a single point of stress, if you wish. As the blast wave just knocks, uh, threatens to knock you both down, so by avoiding the injury you avoid the worst of it and can pick yourselves up. But there, when when the uh, the flash and the the, the ringing in your ears um, dies down, you notice that both the drone and Van Leer have completely disappeared. There is no trace of them whatsoever. I will say that the scientists in you remember a very very important lesson in uh, physics that you learnt. Pretty much the time you started at the academy. The same matter cannot occupy the same space at the same time. Mm -hmm. I hate quantum physics. Who wants to go next out of you guys? There's one Borg drone left. Thankfully, that Borg drone doesn't look like any of you. Nobody's volunteering, so I guess it's going to get charged and I'll All right, it. then. Nova is going for percussive maintenance. Mm. Right, so this guy um, is... What's the deal with hand-to-hand -hand combat again? It's... Choose a weapon and target. If it's a melee attack, difficulty of one. If the target is aware of your attack and able to defend themselves, it becomes you versus their daring, your daring and security versus their daring and security. But what were we talking about? This is a Borg drone. So it's probably going to be difficulty one for you to hit. And you manage four, so you get three back. So uh, you can do the usual of choosing to bank some or pile some into um, extra damage. Now what I will say is that extra damage costs two momentum. And you have got three over what was necessary, so you could bank one and then spend the other two on extra damage? Yeah, seems reasonable. Okay, so I will bank the one, and I will allow you to give me unarmed combat damage, unless you're using a knife or something else. No. Nope, the unarmed strike, so you do actually three damage. The drone does have exoplating, but Nova managed to generate enough damage that there is some still left over and you essentially... Well, how would you like to take out this Borg drone, Sean? <laughs> this place from Texas is definitely an RKO. Just walk up and choke slams it. <laughs> no, full on RKO. A full on RKO. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A jumping I don't know RKO. I'm seeing like, like, like the Viper. It's like. That is the RKO, be stupid. That yeah. is the RKO, yeah, quite. <laughs> there we are. Hey, <laughs> Thank you, Sean. Day. Hey! Yep. Yeah, it's had a long, long day. Although, let's hope that it's uh, the Borg drone sold it better than uh, Hulk Hogan did. <laughs> Nevertheless. Alright, I'm gonna. Up there then. So that combat was short and sweet. They only sent a handful of drones out, but Nova manages to essentially crunch one to the floor so that it is taken down and taken out. 
But the interesting thing is, now that you look down on that crumpled uh, mass of Borg drones, you do notice that each of them has a piece of equipment kind of attached very visibly to them in the same place that um, looks very similar to the um, phase discriminators that you were, you were just creating just now. They copied our idea. Mm -hmm. So, you have now met the enemy, as it were, and you've also got an idea of where to go. You've got a means of protecting yourself against being forcibly introduced to this timeline. I think it's time, unless there's any other preparations you want to make, to go inside. Um, Navis has been told if we're not yep. back in two hours, <clears throat> go with plan B. Absolute destruction. It's not nice, but I'm saving the solar system in return for yeah. one city. Okay. Didn't need that moon anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's right. fine. It's not like <clears throat> the only planet in the Federation. You humans and uh -oh. uh, human centrism. <laughs> it's not even the planet. It's a moon. Okay. So. A uh, bit of theatre of the mind for you now. So, you switch on these uh, face discriminators of yours, and there's a there's like a a, a visual. Uh, it's not a vis not well. There's a, there's a visual shimmering of the air around you, but there's also a slight pressure change that for a moment uh, makes your ears feel as they're about to pop, but they don't. So it's slightly uncomfortable at first, but other than that, there are no other side effects that you currently feel. And so you are able to step through the weird shimmering field to get to the other side. And when you do, you take a moment to uh, take in what you see, because where there was once this uh, glittering example of early um, human colonization of its uh, nearby satellite has now been entirely overtaken with that uh, horribly utilitarian uh, org technology so there are buildings in more or less the places you uh, would have expected them to be uh, had have you had you seen or visited Tycho City before but of course it's all been replaced with uh, Borg utilitarianism so there is ev everything there is, is is to serve a purpose, and uh, none of it is to celebrate art or history or anything like that. Everything has been borgified. So the whole area is now um, darkened, as if the uh, the light of the sun has been muted. Uh, the whole area is lit by that sinister, weird green. That the Borg like to uh, like to illuminate the place with, and every now and then you can see intermittent uh, movement, which the, uh, the the stilted march of uh, Borg drones moving to and from. You do have a destination with which you can proceed to, so it's now a case of getting there. Maybe without attracting too much attention to yourselves, since you don't know how many Borg are present. But uh, there are certainly enough to make it uh, potentially deadly if you attract too much attention to yourselves. Question, so, Matt? Yes. Can I find that sample of moss that I sent you? Yes, it's exactly on the other side of the... Uh, it's exactly where you expected it to be, where you laid it down. Cool. I'll try and collect, uh, collect it, because I think it might be interested to have a sample of that that's absorbed energy from this alternate timeline. Yes, indeed. Although something happens to it when you pull it and put it back inside a container that's on yep. you. The moment that yep. you... So you, you kind of um, pull out an empty the empty container that it originally came in. Yeah. Pick up yep. the moss itself, which your um, face discrimination field allows you to do. Yeah. And then dump it in the container. As soon as you put that container on, like a like a pouch or a pack um, yep. slot on yourself, yep. there's kind of an energetic reaction. Parts of the moss start to burn away. 
Can I quickly rip out the um, tricord and see if I can work out what's happening? Yeah, what's sure. There's uh, a very definite um, reaction going on because the, the moss is being drawn back into your timeline, essentially. Because you are you are you are basically walking pockets of your own timeline in this alternative time stream. So the reaction <clears throat> appears to be that the some of the uh, cells of the moss are being damaged from that translation back. So it's 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 kind of a a um, what's the word a a oh the word the, such such a word has completely escaped me. <clears throat> it's a way of seeing what would happen to yourselves if you right. tried passing to or from and you didn't have this protection on you. I'll make a the moss that. survives, it just yeah. gets burnt in several places as there's an energetic reaction that, uh, or thermal reaction almost, for, to, uh, to crossing time streams. Yeah. Well, moss has survived well. If I don't find an immediate use for that later, be interested to see how the you know, damage has altered the moss's uh, unusual properties. Because if I remember, this moss actually came about because of um, energy it was exposed to from some tilical related stuff that caused a rift in subspace. So it'd be interesting to see how the properties have altered due to this um, exposure to a different timeline. Obviously, that's not gonna. Uh, that study's not gonna happen immediately because which I is don't have my lab. interesting that you bring it up because I yeah. would say that that goes back to your researcher's foundation and your balance of science and nature because yeah. the reason you picked up that moss in the first place. Yeah. Actually, no, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. I'm thinking that moss was actually from a different planet, wasn't it? Dang it. That was almost a callback. <laughs> well, almost cool. <laughs> it was or it yeah. was actually it's not far off the callback actually so I will I will let that slide if we count that as because you the reason you did it was because of um, Bertram's values of research yeah yep and it was definitely a callback to the previous occasion when this uh, moss was subjected to yeah the Tilikal energy, and now you're doing it again with subjecting it to energy from a, an alternative timeline. So, I would say that that is a very good callback of your value to a previous episode. Woohoo! So, because it influenced why you did it now. Yeah. So that will count as an appropriate callback. So, note in your personal log that that happened. That oh, your yeah. value. Oh affected your behavior here as a result of its use in a previous episode. Yep. yep. Uh, I don't recall the number of that episode or the title of that episode, so just give it as good as a... Yeah. ...a description as you can remember. And that, ladies and gents, is how we get character advancement in Star Trek Adventures 2nd Edition. You try and Gary. link your value or values to... How it may, how it, how your value makes you behave now to how it made you behave back then. In a way, I might be getting that a bit too convoluted there, but that was essentially a nice callback there. Thank you. So, there we go. One I'm more of those we get an arc. <laughs> Ooh, a moss-based arc, definitely. Well, yes. <laughs> So essentially, if you can have your character behave in a certain way and you justify it because your value was used in a previous episode to do that made you behave X, Y, and now it's informed your behavior in this episode to do something as a result, that's a callback. And if I agree to it, that will allow you to gain a essentially a milestone, a callback milestone. Uh, Matt? Yep. Just so you know, I've looked through my notes. The episode I got the moss was A World with a Bluer Sun. Which was, yeah, one of the er the, the second episode, I think, wasn't it? Or the third? Yep. Uh, I think it was number two, according to my notes. Yeah, number two. So there we go. That's way, way back. So... 
I'm glad I make these notes. So, um, for everyone who's watching and playing's perspective, this is our 46th episode. And we've way, called all way the way cool. back to see it as episode two. <laughs> Damn. That's how we will. Cool. All right, then. So, um, you proceed carefully and as quietly as you possibly can. Now, the advantage you have, of course, is that unless you take aggressive action, the Borg do not actually consider you a threat. And it's uh, you keep on heading in the direction of the tetrionic radiation that Ori and Edwards were able to identify earlier, which is giving you a good direction. As you are heading in that direction, what you notice is that you are heading in the direction of what looks like a an, an upward moving stream of energy in the near distance. It seems to be emanating from what almost looks like a um, a, a circular kind of Borg, almost like a dome, like a, a, a dome made by the Borg. And it seems to be firing this energy up into the air, which then kind of uh, spreads outward almost like a fountain, a fountain head to, uh, to spread this field outwards. Eventually, you come across an area where you swear you can hear the sound of sobbing coming from somewhere nearby it's all right <laughs> Sean says be right back okay no problem Sean so you are proceeding further and further into the uh, areas of the Borg, but you can definitely hear somebody in the near distance telling somebody else to be quiet. It's uh, pull out tricorder to start scanning for life yep. forms. Likewise, Ori and Nova also get a, a feeling of distinct fear and anxiety coming from nearby. If you want to give me a control and medicine to scan for life signs, that would be grand. Okay. Biology is a focus? Sure. Is that um, reason or insight and... It's going to be control and medicine because you okay. are using a device to do it, therefore... Okay. Two successes. Nice, nice, nice. I only needed one, so that gives you one extra in the momentum pool. Cool. Very close by, there appear to be three human life signs hidden behind all this machinery over here, it seems. Okay. They do not register as Borg, so they are definitely uh, regular humans. <clears throat> okay. I'll indicate that to the team. Show Vibers move in and point, uh, try to call to and point to where the spins are coming from. So, okay. what we know about Borg is unless they think you're a threat, they leave you alone. Precisely. So if, if someone ended up here and have hidden and knocked on the Borg way, the Borg might be even not noticed, still just chosen not to bother with them. In which case, I think it's a really good time to whistle Ode to Joy. Ah <laughs> oh, man, okay <clears throat> Because it's not something that's a threat And it's not something a Borg drone would do mm. And it's not something obviously against the Borg drones So they probably wouldn't even notice it <laughs> But the people might so, yes, as they hear you whistling, <laughs> even though Ori seems to think that the, the Borg could be extra tricksy and be trying to lull you into a false sense of security. Um, a trio well, of civilians. <laughs> trio of civilians does step out from around a uh, load of large Borg equipment and start heading towards you, one of which seems to step forward further. Oh, thank God! Starfleet! Um, I'm going to step forward and uh, say, are the three of you okay? I'd like to scan you in case you've been harmed by the transfer yeah. over here. 
No, we're, we're fine. Um, some people were getting chased by the Borg, but we managed to uh, run in here and they seem to have, well, not seen us. Or not cared about us ever since. They do come closer so that you can scan them. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to scan them for cellular damage. There is some evident, yes. Now what you've yeah. got is this lady seems to have her wits about her and is, is quite rational, whereas you've got this pair here. Uh, the <coughs> woman appears to be extremely anxious, which uh, both the empaths can pick up very, very easily. Um, the male is trying to keep her calm and comfort her. It's not doing much good, of course, but nevertheless. Uh, this lady with her with her sh uh, stuff together actually um, does introduce herself. I'm Madeline Belmont. I'm, uh, or rather I was, one of the scientists working at the Science Institute before this happened. What do you know about this? This? I'm not exactly sure, but from getting close to the dome over there, I'm pretty sure the Borg uh, have created some kind of massive subspace field generator. They appear to have created some kind of huge phase discriminator, which is allowing their time, their alternative timeline, which is what I'm guessing this is, to start reaching out. Slowly encapsulating Tycho City. I tried to get as close a look to their facility as I could, but they're keeping it too well guarded. And then, of course, they started bringing in civilians. I managed to get these two away from a clutch that the Borg were bringing for, I guess, assimilation, but uh, I could only get two. Okay. You were. Uh, don't appear the worse for wear. Are those face discriminators on your belts? We may have come in intentionally looking for survivors. Well, that's genius. I have to say, the translation of when we came over into when this field enveloped us was initially very painful. Which makes sense, considering our entire quantum resonance was being, or our temporal resonance, rather, was being entirely rewritten. You can expect much the same to happen when we cross back over, if we cross back over. Although, I'm not sure my companions are going to be in much of a state to be survive that translation. Surviving it once is fine, but surviving it twice? It's truly... Um, Bertram will say uh, to Madeline, uh, we've already seen and there is signs of the beginnings of cellular damage. A second glass will have um, cumulative effects. It would have to However, agree. Yeah. However, it's uh, going to turn to uh, Vibers as I say this as well. We do know the the Borg are also trying to make their own versions of these devices. They literally sent a few drones through. I'm assuming that we're going to have to actually go and try and destroy that this thing that they're using to try and invade our world. If we could manage to grab some of those devices, we could actually use them to get some of the civilians here through while minimizing the risk of further damage. It's dangerous, but well, that's a possibility. We definitely have to go there. Yeah. If you can uh, somehow disrupt their phase discriminator so that our native timeline's natural resonance starts to push back, then the translation effect for those of, like myself who are trapped in here would be lessened as our own timeline reasserts itself. But that means getting into, and she jerks her thumb behind her, that. Right. Um, here's where we got in. That might help you get <coughs> closer to an exit, hope, which might make it weaker than it is here. Okay. That might help you keep going a little bit longer. 
Um, we need to go take that thing out before there isn't a home to go back to. Okay. I did notice something while I was there. Most of the Borg drones they've got in the surrounding area are busy rounding people up. My best guess is they want to know what's what in our timeline so that they can more easily assimilate it. That being said, they seem to have diverted the majority of the drones who were in the dome at the time that it all happened to this effort. If you can use the southern entrance to get in, you might find it more lightly guarded. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, I'll take these guys to where you told me. If you find... Nova, how hard is it to make a couple of discriminators up if they find a phaser? Now, uh, Sean has... Uh... Oops, oh, no, you're sorry, back. You're back. Gone. Um, not too difficult. Right, anybody got one spear phaser on them? Uh... I think we used up our spears, didn't we? Bravo of security has got a type 2. I have a type 1. Oh, there we go. Or I've got a type 1. So yeah. I've got a sound on me, apparently, as well. Um, because my type 2 got used up. Uh, do you want to use... Or I volunteers is type 1. If you can throw them together one discriminator, Nova, then they've got something they can either say one of them or get or use it to... Uh... Would that work? Ooh. I find nice. a chance to use it. Yeah, okay. It's like I... not repairs, but... No, but it'll, um, it'll be something that only lasts a scene, so that'll be fine. Alright. Um, I'm gonna let you do me a daring or a reason and engineering uh, jury rig job on this, so Nova and Edwards again. Uh, just so you can generate some more momentum to get your uh, momentum pool back to full. Uh, if I may lead. Yeah, go for it. Cool. You've already done this once, so the difficulty will be brought down. So you've... Oh, Never mind! Any extra that uh, Nova puts in is now... Uh, gravy. Gravy. <laughs> There we are, then. As turns over the phaser, goes, Oh, you've got the switch here, the set from phaser to phase discriminator. <laughs> it's not interesting anymore now it's been done once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just do the thing with the thing and then, you know, there the rest. You got it. And, you know, Edwards really does, really does have it. So, yeah, you are able to botch up another phase discriminator on the quick to give to these three guys, so that maybe, if they're closer to the, the edge of the uh, the anomaly, they can, uh, the edge of the bubble rather, I should say, they could uh, maybe get a bit easier translation. Okay, nice, like it. All that's left now is to get to the dome. Yes, and we need to get round the dome and into the south of it. Hmm. So, what I'm going to want from you guys is basically a stealth roll as a group. So I'm not going to ask you all to make individual um, stealth rolls. It's going to be the usual thing. Someone can lead, someone can assist, or, you know, one person can just show you all and just everyone can tippy-toe and scream shh at each other. But, um, sc scream hush at each other. But, uh, nevertheless, stealth is going to be a control and security jobby and i would definitely recommend nova be the lead because nova has got infiltration as a focus if somebody wants to assist with uh control and security i would suggest bravo of security actually be the one who assists this because he is a supporting character Yes, of course yeah. nova gets three successes and leads everybody flawlessly to the southern entrance <laughs> It looks like Nova's going to go to the without any help whatsoever. Exactly. <laughs> so the moment uh, stealth is mentioned, uh, Nova just uh, put, puts a finger to her lips and says, follow me. 
But be quiet. So yes, Nova is able to lead folks around. So you notice... Um, just see what Mike said. Master of Stealth, yes, indeed. <laughs> Thank you, Gareth. Um, actually, looking at that, that was definitely what I did when I played Metal Gear Solid, if I look, <laughs> now that I look at it. Imagine as you're doing it, you go, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> well, if it works, why not? <laughs> <laughs> or indeed, Davis is one. In any case, uh, Nova, who seems to know all about uh, staying in the blind spots of uh, guards and uh, moving from cover to cover, helps everybody get to the southern entrance. And yes, indeed, there are numerous entrances to this um, almost amphitheater-sized dome. And there's almost like that kind of... Uh, it's almost a hum in your that you can a vibration you can feel in your teeth the closer the closer you get to it. There's definitely a massive amount of energy being channeled through this thing, um, or into this thing, I should say. So the whole place just seems to be, the whole air seems to be vibrating, and um, you can feel the the tingle of static on your skin. But. Nevertheless, uh, you are able to time your infiltration uh, to the irregular patrols that are going past. And by irregular, you know, I know that sounds a bit anachronistic with the Borg, but um, they are these Borg patrols are quite far spaced apart, it seems. So Madeline Belmont's uh, <coughs> estimation of uh, how well they were guarding the place seems to have been pretty much spot on. So, with a count of three, you do rush the entrance at the southern side of things. So, I have to pile you all in here. Alright, so let's see what you find when you get there. So entering into, let me just start with, you can see everything here, yes? Yep. yep. Okay. Entering into the place, mm -hmm. uh, what you notice is the sheer amount of space that is around the place. But what actually surprises you is that there appears to be a great deal of damage that has occurred to the inside of this area. There's definitely evidence of structural collapse in places. There are a couple of bits where um, power conduits have literally fallen out of the wall through some kind of damage or explosion. So whatever ha happened in here, um, they haven't seemingly got around to repairing. Somewhat unusual. Now, you are rather alarmed to notice that on either side of the entrance you are coming into, there are a pair of Borg, rather beefy Borg drones in their alcoves, but at the moment you don't seem to have been noticed. There, is, there are a number of bits of technology that you don't quite understand scattered about the place, with uh, what look like Borg technical drones dotted here and there, at, uh, attending to some type of uh, technology, the most interesting of which is the one in the center that seems to have allowed them to open a rift in space. Now, uh, do, 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 do. what do you learn? Um, well, Let's see what you do learn. Anybody who wants to give me a scan of the place can give me a control and science check with your tricorders. And anything to do with, uh, once again, weird and wonderful science. Yeah. So quantum mechanics, um, subspace field mechanics, those kinds of uh, things can give. feel free to give me uh, reason and science roles rather than control and science, pardon me. That's the point. Uh, how many people are we throwing in? Don't we use a momentum per person we're throwing, don't we? Like, pardon? 
I can't remember. I just remembered something. Or am I misremembering? Isn't it for now the, how the extra people work rules work? Is it costs us momentum to have additional people assisting past the first, isn't it? Yes. So for every additional person past the first assistant in on a task, it costs a momentum to add a new person to. Who do we want to lead on this one, I suppose, is the first question. Well, uh, Mike has just... Actually, no, he didn't. Um, he did. He posted in the chat that's attached to the channel. voice chat. Oh. He said, I'm AFK, can you scan for me, Matt? Right. So, right. Why did I miss that? Because uh, it's in the voice channels chat, not yeah. in the text channel chat. Oh, I didn't know that was a thing. Oh, yeah. I don't there worry about it. We just forget it's here. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I didn't know. Okay, going back to general. All right. Scan for me, Matt, he said. Okay, reason, science, uh, quantum physics, I think we'll use for this. Anybody who wants to join in? I'm waiting to see if there's anyone better than me. Um, I don't have a useful focus for this, so... Nova Edwards... Oh, three successes from Aura. So if uh, Edwards wants to join in, experimental tech will definitely work, as will metallurgy, actually. Four successes overall. Excellent. All right. So as you start scanning the place, uh, the first thing you notice is, of course, the, uh, the gigantic rift, like I said. The subspace field generator they have in the middle appears to have opened <clears throat> up this breach. But it's what's on the other side of that breach that is really interesting. The other side of the breach appears to be a realm composed entirely of fluid. But, nearby to the uh, subspace field generator is another device which these technical drones appear to be busy working at, which contains highly concentrated and refined amounts of Veruvian ore. The moment Edwards manages to understand the, uh, the, compos the chemical composition of Veruvian ore, he kind of... Uh, Ed, Ed, Edwards feels uh, like a, a lead weight drops into his gut. Um, usually, Veruvian ore is used to make bombs. Particularly big and devastating bombs. When detonated, a Veruvian bomb will produce a massive burst of metrion particles. Mm-hmm. And um, which then releases a ton of radiation and gas. Now, those of you who dabble in physics realize that, um, well, it doesn't take much to realize that if they've got a bomb and they've gone to the trouble of opening up a breach. They seem, you would guess, to be intent on sending that bomb through that breach into that subspace realm on the other side. If you took a bomb the magnitude of uh, one made of refined Veruvian ore, obviously it'll create that burst of, of gas and radiation, but um, in, a, in a realm composed entirely of fluid, of matter, it, that will cause massive displacement and thereby a uh, pressure wave that pressure wave would be gigantic almost like the explosion of that bomb would feed on itself to cause an expanding wave of basically destruction that would probably decimate most if not everything inside of that realm we are talking a a galaxy-killing bomb. 
a reality killing bomb almost. So, science team, what you're telling me is them appearing in our dimension is a side effect? It's possible. The sheer amount of Tetrion particles needed to create a rift in space could very well have resulted in an accidental release of um, chronotons. However, what's just as likely is that the confluence of events of the Borg of your timeline creating a a, a portal, a time portal, somehow interacted with whatever is going on here in this alternative timeline to smash them both together temporarily, which might explain some of the structural damage around here now that you think about it. So, with all of this information, what would you like to do? Options, team? <laughs> yes. Um, good question. Well, okay, let's think about this. Um, the moment you logically thinking are Starfleet officers... Hang on, let's see what... Uh, save the galaxy? Well, exactly. Uh, that's the standard goal. Yep. <clears throat> Okay, so logically thinking about this, the moment you tried to interfere with whatever they're doing, the Borg would likely then notice you and start to try and uh, incapacitate, destroy you, whatever. So you're probably, if you're going to want to be able to get at whatever's going on, you're probably going to want someone to get their attention first. Science-related folks are probably going to want to be able to... Science and engineering folks are probably going to want to get at the um, the subspace field generator. Um, your engineers are probably going to be necessary to actually pull apart some of this stuff. There is a lot of radiation coming off of that bomb as well. So. <laughs> uh, Bertram has a bunch of... Um doses of the hyrolichin that you can give out ah. to try and check for the radiation. Yes, yes, yes. I have a cunning plan if no one's got a better one. Ooh. Okay, so just... okay. Um, so let's go for this as plan B unless someone... Sorry, plan C unless someone has a nicer one. Because <laughs> uh, B's already been set up. Um, which is... Head... It. We need two teams. One needs to be dosed up on as much anti-radiation moss as you can because their job is to get close enough to that bomb and set it off and get away before it explodes um, and the other team is to get towards that thing in the middle and figure out how to turn it off uh, before it explodes and then we've got the run and hopefully don't die part um hmm. this is why it's like a Better plan. Okay. Plans then, trying folks. To look at some, just trying to take a look at some of the stuff that's around here. Um, so these two are just. Are they actually there? Or are they like in these kind of like activation? Uh, they, are, they are in their the alcoves. alcoves. They probably won't activate until they are needed. The same goes for these guys in across the way from you. Would they notice if we did any active scans that would... I don't already have, haven't we? We've already, yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I've already done active scans. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to focus on things. Um, That's fine. Okay, um, I think what could destabilise that kind of thing. Gareth? I was just going to say, I've got enough of the high religion to give each of us a dose plus two left over. So if two were going to deal with the bombs, if we uh, did find them now, I can give them an extra dose each to give them a bit more protection as they'd be in their vicinity. Um, what would be the most likely effect if he literally just slaps a dose of high religion on each of the borgs that's currently in that, these alcoves? The high religion basically absorbs radiation away from the host 
It would essentially stop uh, oh, radiation right, yeah, getting. I think it was energy absorbing for some strange reason there. Oh, that's the no, moss. that's virtual moss. Other, other ah. than the damaged one, uh, I got two doses of that. I don't know how it would work on the Borg. It, it might drain some of the energy. Uh, uh, it can also absorb um, energy from a biological host, but I haven't actually done as much experimentation on that as the I've... mechanical stuff. So it, essentially, it would have an unpredictable effect, is all I can see. The thing is, well, theoretical base, it would drain the, at least the initial implants that it's connected to. So, uh, potentially. Potentially, yeah. Uh, I don't know how an effect it might. That's it literally might completely like, disable them. On the side of the head or something and see if it would at least buy us some time if they yeah. became active. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I that, just to uh, blind them or disorientate them, something along those lines. As I was thinking. Yeah. Because these so, two are going to be our biggest obstacle for getting out of it. Yeah. Um, yep, I can get ready to slap them with. Well, I mean, no, sorry, I did interrupt you a lot, so I do apologize. So continue <laughs> thinking. I mean, would how would you think it could potentially work? It could disable them. It could just basically be a minor irritant that just gets their attention on us. There's mm. no way to actually predict for sure. I was hoping for like blinding or some sort of. It's a thing. It's well, I've never done anything like this with the moss, so there's absolutely no way to know one way or the other. Unfortunately, that's all I can give you. Okay. Do we have a better plan than set off the bomb, turn off the <clears throat> turn off the thing, set off the bomb, and hope we get out alive? It is ballsy. Uh, I do like it. Basically, yeah, we need to apologies are to Wait, disable so... what they're ever using to encroach on our timeline, and also I think try and stop them genocide in a potential entire um, alternate universe. So they're not coming through that rip, are they? They're not using it like a gateway. It, looks it doesn't well. look like it. Because this... my solution with the bomb thing would be is simply throw it through, blow it up on that side, but no. But that's what they want to do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering if we can blow it up on this side and that'll destroy this whole uh, facility and anything else around it. I might be going a bit overkill. If they, if we blow up if the bombs and that rift is open, do we want to try and close down the rift before they blow? But mm. we'll close it down. If close it down the rift and then, like, kind of, if we can do something that the bomb will go off after that rift closes, will that rift closing? Is that what's causing the effect that's? encroaching on ours. Or I, I will tell you that it's possible. Yeah. Okay, so... Uh, who's in Team Bomb? <laughs> who wants Team Bomb? I mean, anyone who does anything with the bomb is going to need some engineering related or science related. Ori is volunteering Ori's for Team Bomb. It. Okay. <laughs> You're right. gonna engineer. I'll do it as well. Okay. Uh, ah, the weariness. Is... The weariness. Okay. Uh, Matt, I Yo. give um, the last two doses of high religion. One to uh, Edwards and one to Ori. In that case, to give them a right. bit more protection against Noted. bombs radiation. Noted. Okay. You're gonna want somebody to take on. The job of distracting the uh, the any Borg drones that do activate and start coming after you. You do have Bravo of security as a supporting character who could just fulfil that role, so you can concentrate on what you want to do. That leaves, that, I mean, Nova no, no. and um, Vibers are quite nicely suited to taking on whatever that is in the middle as well. That technology, so. Yep. yep. Unfortunately, that means that uh, Bertram's on team distraction. <laughs> well, I guess I guess I'm. It's, I, I guess I'm launching the um, Bertram Moss at those two nearby drones, and hoping that causes um, enough of disruption to get everyone's attention on me. 
But then, that... if it did, given what's at stake, both for our universe and this other universe, we know nothing about. Bertram is of the opinion of our lives at this point are expendable compared to what's at stake. So, if it's literally he draws the other Borg off and gets killed in order for the mission to be a success, he'll consider that worth it. Heroism. <laughs> oh, well, he's a doctor, and this will save most lives. <laughs> getting a little tear in my eye <laughs> oh. if everything goes wrong and we have still blown this thing up we might get lucky enough to be able to call a chew to go oh, help me get us oh. out of here okay all right anybody have anything they want to add to this plan of awesome i'm wearing the black pants <laughs> It's, yes, it's just as well you're all wearing black pants, as it turns out. <laughs> Except for Nova, of course, who uh, is wearing the uh, the short skirt version of the uniform. All right, then. We all good? Okay. Onwards. Yep. Then, whom of you goes first to do the thing they're doing first? I suggest it's going to be Bertram and Bravo. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're going to wait until the others are in, are in position. position. To give okay. us a thumbs up. Right. So we need to go in the. Who are you distracting? The ones in the middle. Um. Boom. I could go for the ones in the middle, and um, then we're basic. Well, we basically got a, a sandwich between the other two. But right then. Okay. okay. We want set to go back in. That's okay. I ended up with two of me for a second. Yeah. Oh, that's because I moved them as you were trying to move them. Gotcha. Yeah. Whoops a day. Right, it so should clear with a little time. Distract the ones in the middle. Uh, in which case, do we want to hide round a corner? No, for and then they can get pulled out before we, we head in. Alrighty. Uh, likewise, Ori and Edwards can hide behind this piece of machinery over here. <clears throat> well, it's time for Bertram and uh, Bravo to t Team B to do their thing. So I shall... Actually, that's a good point. I have to take him out of initiative because he is a supporting character. But can do can assist Bertram with anything he wants to do. So let's activate Bertram first, then. As Bertram has to... Well, is he just placing the moss or is he throwing it from a distance so he's got enough room, uh, distance between him and the thing to move or what? These are doors between the uh, bits, by the way, if they're not already obvious. Door, 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 etc. So, uh, Gareth, how is Bertram doing this? Is he trying to throw it like a baseball, or is he uh, planting it and then running? What's he doing? So, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, that's okay. Um... And the Vibers wants us to get attention from the center. Is it? Is this? It's basically all this like one long round wall, other than this. It's like, uh, like I said, it's an amphitheater. So all these kind of right. every room is uh, pretty much connected to the to to it as it goes down. Yeah. So you can see the bottom definitely. It's not. It's, yeah. But you're like kind of yeah. on a balcony here almost. Yeah. yeah. Okay, what we want is basically attention on this, and we want to clear the middle out so the Nova and Vibers could go in and try and shut down that pain. So, given the way um, the Bertram is, especially he's got, you know, think of the long term as a value, he'd be more likely to actually take advantage of the fact that the Borg aren't currently hostile, gets to a appropriate position, maybe sort of this staircase around by here. And then get the Bertram Moss. He, or if you can get close, get the Bertram Moss on to say this one, and then have that the signal for Bravo to try and shoot the other one. So to get all the ones on the outer uh, ring attention on us and try and incapacitate, if we can, the two in the center to clear the way for the others. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. So you have no, you have time to position yourself because they have no yep. reason to think of you as anything other than background noise. So, yeah. Okie dokie. So I guess I am. 
Well, it's going to be a control and security, basically, but uh, Bravo is going to aid you in this. Uh, so, let's see how he does. Oof. Still got a success, so you need one success to land it where you want to land it. Okie dokie. Um, as it's, I'm using Moss, can I use Mycology as a focus? <laughs> sure. <laughs> um... Okay. Does anyone mind if I use a point of momentum? You know, given that if this goes wrong, it could go badly wrong. Yeah, please do. Okay. So that gives me an extra die, is that right? Yes, yes, yes. So... Three successes. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, Bertram hurls the moss at the drone. The drone gets hit with the moss and the moss starts to spread and starts to latch onto the um, implants of the drone which then um, obviously starts showing signs of depowering it as the, as the drone's um, eyepiece starts to um, fizzle out. You can tell this by the way the, uh, the, the red laser sight on the side of the, uh, the, the, the ocular implant starts to cut out, starts to flicker until it eventually does cut out and the, the drone itself just kind of half keels over to one side as the the moss finding all of this lovely immense power inside of this uh, these these implants starts to voraciously spread and so the, uh, the the drone starts to try and pick at the the moss but it's already spreading quite far um <laughs> bravo gives the uh, gives the doctor a, a, a big thumbs up but then starts beckoning him uh, to him quicker as uh, with a click and the, the, the hum of powering up servos, uh, one of the bigger Borg drones at the back um, decouples itself from its alcove and uh, seems intent on coming in your direction. So uh, that's who's going to go next. So Bertram has still got a minor action remaining to move himself to wherever he wants to move to. So I would suggest uh, you do that now. Yeah. Okay. And I kind of like run over and leap by here. Give myself yep. a little bit of cover. Well, I don't want to... Oh, actually, do to we, if we lodge by there, then we got cover from both north and south. Yes, yes, yes. And cover to... is what you want, because cover changes ranged combat from being a flat uh, difficulty to hit to being... A, uh, you, you make... Um, Opposed rolls to see if it hits you. So, the Borg drone is going to activate next, as it takes a minor action to move into this zone, but levels its arm as it takes a shot in your direction. So, I am going to have it be control and security. But, 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 ooh. That was mm, not very good at all. But nevertheless, it is against you with cover. So if it's a ranged attack, it's difficulty too. But because you have cover, this becomes an opposed task resisted by your control and security. Now, once again, because Bravo is with Bertram, Bravo can aid Bertram with this because he doesn't do anything else but aid whoever he's Thank near. You. So uh, Bravo can only roll one die. Uh, I've got three successes. So, overall, um, oh dear. Let's oh. Uh, forget that then. Actually, with a complication like that. Okay, so, uh, uh, Bravo. Who's using their Legion of Honor on this one? Is somebody using their Legion of Honor? I think we've mostly used them from the. From the battle? Uh, yeah, you like... have used a lot. I, because I, Bertram wasn't actually involved in the battle, he's still got both of his, so I'll Nice, nice, it. nice. So, message. Are you, you can use them as well, maybe? Uh, I think, yeah, you maybe have one left. Yeah, Nevertheless. I keep more eyes for team bomb problems. So, um, Bertram ducks behind this piece of equipment <clears> and Bravo <throat> tries to get around it as well. He, he jumps up to fire a shot in the, uh, the Borg's, the drone's direction which allows the drone to take a shot at him, but luckily Bertram sees it levelling its arm. It seems Bravo was expecting it to uh, come in and just try and 
uh, cloves within melee range, but uh, this one actually seems to have armament lodged into its uh, into its arm. So Bertram manages to bring Bravo down quickly as the shot goes wheeling overhead. So nice, nice, nice. Right, whom of you is going sorry, next? Yes, go on. sorry. Um, yes, because I got three successes plus Bravos for the four earlier. Was that enough to regain the point of momentum? Oh, that yes, I yes, 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 yes. Good point, well made. Yeah. I have a Thank feeling the guys may me. need that may need that momentum soon. So, whom of you wishes to go next? Um, I believe the plan was to try and distract the other drone in the middle of the uh, subspace rift generator. So, oh. is Nova going to do the business with the tech, or is Vibers going to do the business with the tech? Because the other person then has to distract the uh, the Borg drone. This does sound like your sort of madness to deal with as tech. It <laughs> is. <laughs> so, uh, I have got a sound gun, so do you want me to distract the drone first, or do you want to try and get in and get started while it's quiet-ish? Um, I think distract the drone first. Okay. Okay. Well, I think... This is a really good time to use a sound gun on full settings again. Because I haven't changed the settings. <laughs> Why do I Everyone have this... Everyone who encountered it might be dead. <laughs> Why do I have this sudden image in my head of, of um, Vibers coming in with an electric guitar, bringing the amp in, turning the volume all the way to 11, and then slamming a chord? <laughs> If it wasn't piss if it wasn't a pistol, he probably would have. <laughs> <laughs> Go for it. So these things are not using cover, therefore the difficulty to hit with a ranged attack is going to be two. It's going to be control and security as before. Okay. So. Um is it no, I need to save that for when things go horribly wrong. Okay. I like it's not not if things go horribly wrong, when things go horribly wrong. <laughs> yeah, I would like to pull an extra dice into this. All right, so, so that's yep. a Into point momentum. of momentum. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. And let's -a go. Let's -a go, Mario. Two successes, exactly what you needed. So damage, basically. Three damage, uh, unless you want to spend momentum to get the other guy in the in the uh, with the same damage. Yeah, go for it. Cool. So spend another point of momentum. Okay, so that disables that guy with the hyro lichen growing all over him, and that one. So that sound emission uh, destroys both of those guys, basically. Okay, so you've cleared the way nicely. Uh, but now it's their turn. Uh, let's have... Ooh, what happened there? I pressed the end turn button. Oh, me... right, right, right. So it disengaged you. Cool. Let's have this one come next. <clears throat> Another tactical drone uh, lat unlatches itself. Actually, no, that makes no sense. Why would it be that one all the way over there? Uh, yeah, no, I, I start this off finish. Right. This one latch, unlatches itself and starts heading in the direction of these fellows here, trying to come at you from behind. It's going to shoot Mr. Bravo, I think. Now, Bravo has got cover. So, Gareth, if you could uh, roll... What was it for cover? If it's a ranged attack, control it's control and security. And security. Yes, can you roll control and security for Bravo, please? For Bravo? Uh, does the hand phases as he's being shot at count as a focus? Let's go with yes, why not? Makes Thank sense. You. Three successes. Oh, which means that he just ducks behind cover in time for the uh, Borg drone to miss. Oh, nice. Cover. It works. Now, if... 
Hmm, actually no. Scratch that. I was going to say, if Bravo was a, wanted to, he could return fire, but he is a supporting character, not a main character. But if you are behind cover and uh, you win the opposed yep. task, you can spend... Uh, you, you can uh, either move out of reach, or you can spend two momentum to counter-attack. So, next turn, uh, of... Yep. For any time that anyone else comes under fire and you are behind cover and you you beat the opponent's uh, attempt at shooting you, you can spend two momentum to shoot right back. So there's that if you want to use it. All right, who of you is going next? Is it going to be Nova going for the portal device or is it going to be Edwards or Ori going for the bomb? Um, I think we've got uh, a lot of attention at the portals. So Nova's uh, going next, or make the other team go okay. next? Not unless somebody's got a... Or I say bomb, so... Yeah, or I was I was saying bomb. Say, if you, if, I was going to stand back if you were going to jump into it, but I'm happy to go for it. Yeah, as well, so uh, let's go all right. Lead with science. All right, then, all right. Um, so, I mean... One imagines those Borg technical drones are not going to be too happy about you monkeying with their bombs, so what are you going to do about them first? Are you just going to walk up and hope they don't notice you tinkering with the bomb, or are you going to do a big whole distraction of, hey, look over here, guys? I mean, if you let me go first, I can give a blast of the sound gun. Just overcharge it. Or so you could both use your turn together, and Edwards could assist all right, with his uh, attack shot, if he's going to make an attack shot. I was just thinking I cover what keep the heads down while um, or I jumps on the bomb. <clears throat> Ooh, he do. I mean, that's what I was thinking. Obviously, what does Mike want to do? Then why don't we save? Hang on, the mic's typing. Let's have a look. Up for whatever. Okay. If Edwards wants to cover Ori's attempt to get at the bomb, then maybe Edwards should go first so that he could do whatever he wants to do to make it easy for Ori to get there. So we'll come back to Ori in a moment. We already know what he's set to do, so that's cool. Uh, Edwards, do what you're going to do then. Okay. Sound gun. Do it bas uh, basically, the nearest group of drones just to give Ori cover. Okay, so it's going to be... They're not using cover, so it's going to be a flat difficulty of two for you using control and security to attack with your sound gun. And I can't remember. Did you say it's, you can use momentum Ooh. to get an additional target with this? Yes. But, so uh, I basically just want to hit the tar uh, the, the whole group, so that we... May I take two momentum? Go for it. You yep. may. I the presume more we, we are doing... The more we do before they adapt, the better. better. And is it control security? Security. I would like to throw in my. Do I just how much? Yeah, my value. Oh, those who do not learn, because last time I did this, I didn't. I do believe I didn't quite get it right, or did I? I, I honestly can't remember. I either got it wrong or I went re I think I did get it wrong. So it wasn't very effective. I oh, think. when you were stopping the boarding action. Yes. Yeah, it's possible you didn't get it completely right last time. You damaged them some, maybe, if not much at all. I think you might have missed. So, those who yeah. do not learn, if you want to throw in uh, your value as a as an excuse to use determination, then yep, you can do that, absolutely. Remember to put it down in your log later. I'll just be more careful, so I want to make sure it yep. works and it's all on the thing. So it's daring and security, did you say? Uh, security. Control and security. Um, but remember to roll one less dice because you are using determination. Yeah, so it's just the one dice then. I roll and then I get determination, which is Yes, yes, yes. Which is an automatic. So, which is success, which is so it's three. 
So it's actually three successes. Yes, exactly. So uh, that was exactly what you needed. So uh, click on the sound gun, or I could just roll, scroll up to see the last one. Three damage. You spent extra momentum to get the extra guys, so uh, it seems like they haven't adapted to it yet. So, Spadoosh. Spadoosh. You've managed to knock down the other techni the technical drones. Oh, nice. there's only two, sorry. In that case, uh, one more momentum. So he okay. spent two, not one. Okay, okay. That's fine. Easy mistake to make. All right, then. So you effectively gave uh, Ori cover by dispatching those two. You do hear the rather sinister click whir of the uh, of the drone behind you activating. Which... Hmm... What do they value more? Well, they don't know what you're doing, but they could extrapolate. I am gonna go with this fine fellow here. So this guy from behind uh, activates himself and starts lumbering in the direction of Nova. These things are not quiet. Therefore you definitely hear him coming. Uh, this is going to be a melee attack, so it's daring insecurity. You are able to defend yourself, so it's going to be countered by Nova's daring insecurity. So Sean, if you could give me a roll. I only got one success. You got three. So as a result, uh, I do believe. So since you won, you can either move out of reach, or you could spend two momentum to uh, to counterattack. Um, I think since I got a success, I can burn one of my medals to get two momentum to him. Okay. Sounds reasonable. So basically, roll daring and security again, as in, in another opposed task to uh, to counter attack. So that's two successes versus the drones. One. So yeah, you win that, which means you do damage with whatever you were. Uh, Using as a weapon? <laughs> like I don't already know. <laughs> Two damage. Ball drone. It's exoplating. Which means I will spend one threat to negate that one remaining piece of damage. So, uh, Nova essentially does whatever her uh, flying manoeuvre is, and it either doesn't, do doesn't budge the Borg, or it just kind of um, raises itself up off the floor after you knock it down kind of thing. It's obviously... this one's got tougher exoplating than the last one you, uh, you took on, so these are obviously the, the security variety of uh, Borg drone. Nevertheless, uh, that's the Borg drone done for now. Uh, after that counterattack by Nova, so that leads us on to Ori's turn, which we were going to take, and we arranged around it. So Ori is now free and clear to head towards the bomb. If he wants to make that journey, you do seem to be still logged in, Mike. So feel free to move your character token. This is where the bomb's at. So, this is a very complex device, and by the looks of it, it's also a very... Uh, <laughs> this is also a very uh, volatile device. It's got what looks like a timer lodged on it. So, the obvious plan here was for the Borg to set the timer and then hurl it somehow through that... Um, subspace rift, but this bomb is also tremendously big. So, picking this thing up is not going to be easy from some for someone or I size. You probably need three people to lift this thing up, if not four. So, what would you like to do with this bomb? Do you just want to deactivate it, or 
tinker with it so that you set it off so that it's set off prematurely. What was um Bibus's plan here again? Yes. Set a timer, make it go off after we've uh, disabled the rift and leg it. Okay. So Aura is inclined to disarm it, but Vibers wants it to be uh okay, we'll do Vibers plan. Alright then. <laughs> hey, unless you got a better one, it's all good. <laughs> Now, let's see, uh, Ori has foci that, strangely enough, are not much to do with explosives. But, luckily for Ori, something like a timer, or at the very least a remote detonator, is essentially a computer system. Ori does have a focus of computers. <laughs> is is there anything that Ori wants to communicate telepathically with another telepathic being? Like Nova? Pray for me. I'm not sure this plan is as, as solid as it was before. <laughs> don't explode. <laughs> I don't like that advice. <laughs> don't blow up, don't blow up, don't blow up, don't blow up. Alright, let's see. Ori is going to have to give me a... Now, is it... I'm going to have to go with reason and science to see if you can A, find, and B, reprogram the timer. I'll keep the difficulty to myself. Two successes is just about enough. Just about enough. So it's a near thing. Hang on. How can I get more? Um, if you... Ooh, how would you get more? You would probably have to spend a point of determination to re-roll one of your dice. Probably the 13. You would have to take the second result, even if it was worse. Um, <clears throat> would that help? Computer expertise would give you a bonus d20 that you purchase for free. So yeah, actually, you could roll an extra d20 now and see what happens. Yep, that very one. So roll me on or I uh, roll the same task again, but just one dice this time. We'll add that to the last one you just did. Oh, it was almost a 20, but then it rolled onto a 2. So you've actually got four successes there. All right. Very nice. Which means Ori not only successfully manages to hack into the uh, detonator. Thank you for the suggestion. Yes, indeed. You also managed to get it so that you've now got... Ori has essentially got the, um, the, the, the switch if it needs to be detonated early. You've got the frequency that the uh, the timer can be communicated with. So you can either set it off on a timer now or set the timer after the rift closes or just run away and then press the button and detonate the thing then. Either way, you have control. What does the team want? Delayed timer, very delayed timer, or remote detonator? Whatever gets us out alive, I suppose. <laughs> I mean, the remote detonator at least allows you the comfort of running away, whether deciding whether or not you're safe, and then detonating it. Your call? <laughs> ah, the delegation. <laughs> Hey, you're the commander. Or as the person that the, that the set up doing it. There we go. <laughs> Remote detonator. All right, so you're going to elect to get as far away and then turn around and decide, yep, we're far enough away, click bang. All right. But before that happens, we have one more tactical drone. Woohoo, we're going to die, y'all. <laughs> I never cease to be amazed by your infectious optimism. <laughs> uh, just because uh, your uh, 
political situations become force you to become nihilistic doesn't mean you have to like Escapism. drag us all down into the explosion. It's Star Trek night. It's escapism. It's not that stuff. All right. The final <laughs> tactical drone detaches itself from its alcove <laughs> and will head in Ori's direction. But Ori does have cover behind the bomb. <clears throat> Is the Borg tactical drone stupid enough to shoot when it's close to that bomb? Probably not, so it's going to go for trying to physically restrain him. So, or I... Part... Go on. There's a part of me that thinks the drone uh, points his gun at Ori behind the bomb and suddenly the, through the Borg uh, hive mind, the Borg uh, queen of this dimension's voice go, No, you idiot! <laughs> <laughs> now... Or I can make a daring and security test to see if he can use the cover to get away from the Borg drone very, very quickly. I don't think you have any escape rapidly from Borg drone related foci, so it's just going to have to be a flat roll. <laughs> Do the Zoidberg run. So, control. Daring, pardon me. Daring and security from Or I, please. Oh, look at that! It is a no-score draw, so neither side gets advantage over the other, so Ori can still be helped, which leaves us with Nova! Nova's turn. What does Nova want to do? So I've got to finish taking out the drone, please. Okay. Drone is aware of your presence. Doesn't have any foci in combat, so just... Ooh, rolls a one. Gets three successes overall, so that's what you got to beat. Two successes. Do you want to... I'm not sure what you can do, though. Uh, I'll just take it. Just take it. All right, let's see how we do. Do the Zoidberg scuttle. Assimilation tubules. Uh, if you want to, you can spend three stress to avoid the damage, to avoid the injury. Uh. Cool. So the thing reaches for for uh, Nova, but Nova manages to quickly duck out of the way. Nido burrito. Right. Next turn. Who of you is going first? <clears throat> Uh, if the bomb's been sorted, I um, guess uh, we want Vibers to do his thing by the rift. Ideally, ASAP. yeah. Yeah. Ready? Probably. Okay. Especially since some currently there aren't any Borg um, at you there. Yeah. Uh, you able to get a good shot on the one shooting, attacking Nova? Uh, potentially, but... Um, well, Bravo might be able to help with that. Bertram isn't a great shot, he's a doctor. <laughs> okay. Let's see if we can turn this thing off then. Alright then. Daring and engineering with your focus <coughs> on warp field dynamics. Okay. I'm also gonna. Difficulty go in. three. Right. Uh, Starcross now just makes it a double focus, doesn't it? Yes, I think it does. Bring up Starcross anyway, just to make sure. So, uh, well, that's asked the character scores two successes for any die that rolls equal to or less than twice the department rating, so yeah. So you can click okay. um, dedicated focus for that one. I'm not using reason or control. Uh -huh. And I can't read that one, so let's see what it actually says. Cochran Medal of Excellence. Select a single focus when you, uh, which must relate to scientific or yeah, engineering field. That. Once permission, when you spend a point of determination on a task involving that focus, you may select two benefits of spending that point of determination instead of just one. Essentially, gaining four successes. <laughs> I am going to pull in six impossible things for breakfast, 
if I can. And Remember to make note of that in your personal log then. <clears throat> yep. So this means I'm using a focus, a double focus, and a determination. So I'm doing roll that. one less dice. The dice. Uh, right, determination doesn't dump it down to three anymore. It just means one's guaranteed. Yes. Um. Should I pull momentum and get an extra? Up to you. But this seems like an all or nothing type of situation, so. It was. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. In which case, yeehaw! Oh, look at that. Look Ooh. at that. All right, then. So the uh, field in the middle starts to <clears throat> flicker. Can I wait for the Vapor 7 2 on the other side as it closes? Uh, I'll go with. Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> stay, stay here for now in this area, because that's all that you've been able to do, because we've got to figure out what the other guys are doing as they finish their turn. <clears throat> I am going to use. Let's see. I'm going to use this tactical drone now to uh, leap down here, and then he's going to take a pot shot at Vipers for doing what he did. Vipers does not have cover very well there, or does he? No, tell a lie, he does. So this is going to be a pair of contested control and security checks. So control and security from Vipers, please. I got two. Control and security. Yes, you beat it. You've only got two momentum left in the pool, so I would probably recommend against spending that to shoot back, unless you wanted to. No, I'm gonna let someone else have a chance to use it, so... Speaking of, who wants to go next? I mean, Nova could try finishing off the tactical drone, Edwards can try shooting somebody, either the tactical drone on Nova or the tactical drone on Ori, or I could try getting away, Bertram could try getting away. Uh, I, I, think back. I think it's probably sort of Nova or Ori who are currently grappling with Borg are probably the priority here. I'm happy to, yeah, I'm happy to go with, uh, to basically step up and give another crack, knock down to clear the way for Aura again. Okay, so um, Edwards wants to go next. <clears throat> Off you go. Difficulty 2, since it's not using cover. <clears throat> Moving. Control and security. Security. Focus. Uh... Oh. One success. Oh dear. Do you have any? Uh, you do not. Make a time, Jerry. Uh, yeah. Nope. Nothing. Fortunately, you don't manage to actually do what you needed to with the sound weapon on uh, that bulk drone. So unfortunately, uh, this tactical drone activates next, and we'll come around and try and grab Bravo. Gareth, if I could get you to be Bravo to give me daring and security. Daring and security, hand to hand combat as a focus. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> now the Borg drone did very badly there. Okie dokie. Focus. <laughs> Three successes from Bravo. Nice. So all of those can go, some of, uh, one of that can go into the momentum pool, another can go into damage. So damage from that is an arm strike. Yeah. So that's yep. three damage in total uh, against the drone's exoplating, which means it does zero. <laughs> it clangs against the Borg's breastplate, but that's it. Which one of you wants to go next? I'll tell you what, given the um, time remaining... Um, down so we could leg it. <laughs> yeah, 
basically leg it. So I am going to give Nova the opportunity to try and basically flying head scissors this tactical drone. Could spend some on to do some damage though, yeah. Well, you know, good point. Could spend momentum to do extra damage if you wanted to, but with the time remaining, I will say uh, let's try and get this done as soon as possible. So I just want to see if uh, Lieutenant Nova can generate a successful attack enough to maybe flip the uh, the Borg drone elsewhere, giving her time to get away. <laughs> yes, indeed. One good call. Because uh, these guys are big. Cochrane Medal of Excellence. What was that, sorry? I'm sorry that I didn't know, I guess. <laughs> Once permission, when the character spends point of determination on a task involving that focus, they may select two benefits of determination to get a chunk load of successes. So, uh, yeah, why am I even bothering in that case? Four successes? Can I ever compare to that? Don't think I can, unless I add significantly more than that. No, that guy goes flying. Whee! Down into the middle. ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum um, which means it goes flying past Vibers as he's starting to climb up this uh, area, trying to get back to the uh, balcony. Um, Ori basically has to run for it to meet up with Edward so that the, uh, the, the, the plodding gate of the tactical drone doesn't manage to catch up with Ori too badly. And likewise, uh, Bertram and Bravo have to skedaddle out of there very quick as the uh, drones suddenly turn their attention back to the fact that uh, they're the only ones left to repair the uh, subspace rift generator, which gives you time to get out of there. And essentially gives Ori the opportunity to basically click the detonate button. Disappointed it cuts off the end uh, like that. I called it the people's champion for acrobatic brawling. Well, yeah, exactly. Absolutely. Nevertheless. Boom. Yes, indeed. <laughs> so you guys uh, probably give it until you're at least out of the dome before you detonate the thing. And uh, it definitely, definitely causes of enough of an explosion that it knocks you all to the ground. But as it does, the, the dome goes up and um, you see the big fountain of energy emanating from the top of the dome starts to sputter before it eventually gives out entirely and then balls of uh, orange plasma just start pluming up as the internal superstructure starts going up from the sheer explosive force of the bomb. But a strange thing does start to happen. As the dome gets destroyed and you pick yourselves up and start running as fast as you can from the um, the inevitable blast wave that should occur. The strange um, purplish glow that suffused everything that, uh, that's nominated the border between this alternative timeline and yours starts to <coughs> fizzle and draw back into itself. And slowly, almost like oil dissolving in... Uh, ink, so pardon, kind of parting in water, your the normal sky above you that you expect to see of Tycho City starts to appear and the weird green uh, bits of uh, lighting and Borg tech starts to just fizzle out to be replaced with what was here before. And eventually you are greeted with what you originally should have found. I think we've got one final com message we have to do. Don't blow up the place. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Vipers to Navis. We're back. You don't need to blow it up anymore. It's not press button. <laughs> <laughs> Too late. Claude has the button. Bam. No, yeah, you signal the Navis and they acknowledge it. They're very, very glad to hear that everything's all right and that you managed to um, sort whatever it was that was going on down there. So, yes. As a result of your efforts, it does mean that uh, the people who were trapped inside of the bubble 
uh, were able to be eased back into their normal timeline rather than being um, burnt back in as your timeline reasserts itself. The whole cause never back down. <laughs> Excuse me. The whole cause of it is still strangely indeterminate. It seems to be a weird kind of interaction between um, whatever the Borg were doing in that alternative timeline combined with the uh, time travel attempt that they made when they uh, launched the Borg Sphere. In some weird roundabout fashion, maybe they somehow created that, that event. Maybe it was an entirely different alternative timeline uh, when maybe it was that alternative timelines experiment had after effects they didn't expect with whatever Monologues they were doing just say possibly Picard's fault C Enterprise but yes um, it all boils down to you succeeded and Tycho City is safe the unfortunate side of things are was that um, if there were folks who got nabbed by the Borg and assimilated that unfortunately means that they were fully integrated into that alternative timeline as a result of being imbued with Borg tech from that timeline and therefore don't miraculously reappear back in Tycho City they now belong on that side of things as it were so whether that alternative timeline still exists anymore what created it is unclear so, you saved as many people as you could and ended a potential threat to the galaxy at large, or Earth at the very least, so there's that solace as well. And so, with all of that, the Battle of Sector 001 has come to a close. The, um, the evacuation efforts of Tycho City no longer have to occur. The uh, folks can stop being evacuated, but um, your medical facilities have been able to see to anybody and everybody who was injured in some way and therefore treated. It also gives the remnants of the crews of the surviving ships time to start seeing to the uh, repairs of their own ships and whatever else comes next. But the one last thing that we need to do is calculate casualty reports so what i want is for vibers to represent command i'd like for nova to represent um engineering if i can find actually there's an easy way to do this um can i have edwards represent navigation con Definitely Bertram represent uh, medical, and Ori represent science. I would like you all to roll a uh, six-sided dice, a d6. So if you don't remember how to do that, in the bottom of the chat window, you type slash roll space 1d6, enter, and you can roll a six-sided dice. Ooh. I don't know why it came up as all right for me. But you uh, you rolled, which was what was important. Okay. Yeah. So, the good news is, according to Gareth's role, only one person from uh, the medical team was injured. Ori, unfortunately, four members of um, science were... You say your science departments were injured. Um... But not lethally so, so they can return to duty. Edwards, you were overseeing Helm, so uh, two folks from the con side of things, so either those managing the shuttles or um, some folks managing in navigation areas. Uh, two folks from the con department were injured. Uh, according to Davis's role, four people from command uh, were injured. But Sean rolled a six, which means we rolled an event 
on in if we were using challenge dice from the previous unfortunately that means somebody in operations was killed in action or engineering or engineering uh, actually no engineering was you and uh, no, who who ran no, was, was engineering you were engineering <laughs> i thought it was uh, alex who was engineering no, you said I'm con. You are con, you are engineering. So yes, pardon me. So somebody in engineering got killed in action. So, uh, I am going to ask that if you want to, you can randomly generate a crew member and you can come up with a name for them. We could do this later on as part of um, when I hand out um, character advancement and acclaim. But I would like you, if you could, you don't have to, but I would like it. Mm. I would like it uh, because a, a casualty report has to be has to be made. So I would like you to, at the very least, name the engineer or whatever who got uh, killed in action, and maybe yeah. maybe give us something about who they were, whether whether they were n well known. Whether anybody is uh, anybody of your characters might have known them, perhaps. <laughs> Up to you. Okay. Ensign Here's... Ricky Redshirt. Well, <laughs> um, <laughs> he had so much to live for. The story reasons are because I think this would actually make a really good role play bit for next episode. Yes. Keth. <laughs> Keth. You want Keth to die, oh. do you? <laughs> Um, <laughs> Webby would never, never, know. Webby would oh. never, never forgive you for it. But do you actually want Kef to be the the uh, the, the fatality? I'm going to throw it no. out there. If Kef is the fatality, we should not let Webby know until we actually begin his funeral <laughs> session, <laughs> <laughs> just to get his um, legitimate reaction. It me it makes the casualty report meaningful. <clears throat> I mean, it's, it's part of the story. We could do an and some generic. I will note No, and that... generic. Yes, it's got to be generic. <laughs> I will note that um, yeah, any player any player may choose for one or more of the killed crew members to be a close friend of their character. If you do so, you gain what's called a scar, which is like a, a, a detrimental trait, relates to the trauma of your friend's death, and this rewards a point of determination. So you can start the next episode with two determination. So what you're saying is, if we do pick Kef, we all get to start with two determination <laughs> next episode. You get to start with two <laughs> determination psychologically scar the captain. and a scar. We, yeah, we would need oh, that really? to fight off the uh, fight off the captain because for some reason she'll hold us responsible. I don't know. I'm just thinking Webby and and vengeance here. <laughs> I'll tell you what. We'll let we'll let, Bert, we'll let Bertrand break it to to the captain. Him, shall we? <laughs> Uh, Bertrand, Bertrand challenges his um, negative value, people and socialization, the eternal mystery goes. So, Captain, you know how you were looking for another reason to hate the Borg? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> have you ever noticed how Kef rhymes with death? <laughs> I will leave it to you guys to decide, but um, since. Um, Ask Magica did actually um, make a note of that. I will say this is not my creation. This is rule additional um, rules that were introduced in the Federation Klingon War Tactical Campaign book that was actually released. This is the section on scars and uh, casualty reports that can be introduced. And I thought since this was the Battle of Sector 001, this was probably a good time to wheel out uh, this. And we'll probably also be wheeling out this during the Dominion War also. But um, it may be Keth, it might not be Keth, we'll see. But um, <clears throat> yeah, as a result, uh, thank you very much everybody who um, who watched this. I hope you enjoyed it. This was our first really big encounter with the Borg for this group. So I hope it was everything you hoped it was. We will be moving on uh, next time with uh, something else. As it happens, uh, this episode also... Uh, 
Unintended Consequences marks the end of Season 3. The next episode is the start of Season 4. Uh, what episode number was this one? Was it this was episode 46? 46. Called Unintended Consequences for the purposes of your personal logs. And stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, uh, we will get into, if you do uh, end up making it a character that your uh, character is, um, mm. if you do end up making it a character that your, uh, your, your main character is personally involved with and you gain a scar, we can get into what a scar is and how they work next time. But uh, since we are going to be moving into the timeline of the Dominion War in Season 4, there's going to be plenty of time, there's going to be plenty of opportunity, pardon me, for even more scars and casualty reports to, uh, to start affecting your crew. But <coughs> until then, according to Mike, uh, I will be able to make it next Tuesday, but I am free the week after, which is fine. That means we will aim for the 19th as our next time that we meet for the continuing adventures of the USS Navis. If everybody is good for the 19th. Yep, should be able to. Please Excellent. Well, in that case, thank you all once again, those who tuned into the stream. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you're watching this later on on YouTube and you enjoyed it, then consider giving us a like because it helps not only us, but everyone who does, does Let's Plays of role-playing games and those who do anything to do with Star Trek. As we do our best to appease our Lord and Master, the algorithm. Say it with me, folks. All hail oh, the algorithm. algorithm. In the meantime, I ask you to do like the Vulcans do, which in this case is do your dang best to oppose assimilation by the Borg or any and all of people like them. Live long and prosper, and also to remember to engage in infinite diversity and infinite combinations. Take care of each other, look after each other, <coughs> especially in these weird, wacky, chaotic times that we are currently enduring in the world at the moment. And we will hopefully see you all next week for more shenanigans. But in the meantime, hailing frequencies are now closed. <laughs>